All right, well, good evening. Uh, we're going to get a chance tonight uh, to do something the city hasn't had Recording a chance to in do progress. in a long time. Uh, and that is really talk as a city of what we want for our community's future. Uh, we have a once in really a lifetime opportunity because of the American Rescue Plan and President Biden and our congressional delegation. And so, as you might remember in February, the President asked me to come to DC, join the national lobbying effort to pass the American Rescue Plan and asked me to uh, help make the pitch to the country on why cities need it. Uh, and the end result is that the city of Detroit is receiving the fifth largest amount of money of any city in the United States. We are behind only New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Philadelphia in the amount of money that we're receiving. And it's up to us to put it to good use. So we're going to receive $826 million over the next three years. $413 million is coming in this week. Another $413 million a year from now. Uh, and we have to spend all of it by the end of 2024. It goes back to the federal government. So this isn't a rush. We've got three years. Um, and uh, we have to get started. Now, I'm hoping that city council can agree to accept and appropriate money by June 30th so we can start putting it to work by July 1st. There will be 100 different city council actions over the next three years to appropriate this money. But what we want to talk about is the overall roadmap, the overall direction. And I'd like to start that conversation tonight. The question is, what kind of city would you like to see us build? So let's talk about the federal rules. And I'm deeply involved on behalf of the US Conference of Mayors in working with the Biden administration because uh, the rules are still being formulated. But here's what's clear. We can use them to offset budget shortfalls for the next three years. That means from now through 2024, our employees don't have to worry about layoffs, pension cuts, health care uh, cuts. Uh, you don't have to worry about service cuts. We're in good shape for three years. Second, we can address the investments that have been impacted by COVID. And that money, the new investments, we're calling the Detroit Future Funds. There'll be two things. One is fixing our deficit issues because of a largely drop in income taxes. And the other is what do we build in the future? So if you're talking about what we're going to need through 2024, our 10-year plan of adjustment, when we came out of bankruptcy, said what we're going to spend. And basically, we had to cut. Uh, a thousand city workers got partially laid off. We closed a lot of city offices. We cut a lot of the blight and cleanup funds. The city is dirtier than it's looked in four or five years. We had to do that in order to balance the budget uh, and uh, to restore that and protect our income taxes. We probably have to set aside $400 million of this 826 to make sure we're not looking at cuts. That's going to change from year to year. It might get higher, it might get lower, but that's our expectation now. What that means is that we have $426 million that as a city we can decide how to invest in our future. What kind of city do we want to be? Here's the rules as they are today. As I say, I'm deeply involved on behalf of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. I had a meeting uh, with the White House staff on Thursday, another meeting with the White House staff today, hammering out uh, these rules, along with the mayor of Chicago and the mayor of Los Angeles. Um, but they're starting to take shape. It's not final, but here's what I know. We cannot use the money for pension fund payments, paying off old debt, paying off past legal obligations. This has to be invested in new programs and services for our residents. That's what the whole point of this is, is to build the city of the future, not pay off past obligations. So here's the second piece. We have lots of money coming from lots of sources outside of the American Rescue Plan. So we're not really going to be talking about this tonight because we have other sources of money 
to deal with it. And so we've got $124 million in affordable housing and eviction prevention. That number is about to go up dramatically in an announcement in the next 48 hours. So we have lots of sources to prevent evictions and to build affordable housing. We have lots of sources of health funding for COVID testing and vaccine and contact tracing. We have a, a whole separate fund of somewhere between 60 and 180 million for DDOT and transit outside of this. And the US Senate just passed the water affordability policy. It's not final yet, but if we got through the 50-50 US Senate, uh, we're confident we're gonna see 100 to 200 million dollars. Uh, right now we have a moratorium on water shutoffs through the end of 2022. I'm confident we're going to get a permanent extension on this and uh, a means to fund the replacement of lead lines. So we're not talking about these areas today. They're covered in other uh, uh, pots of money. What we're going to talk about is how we spend our American Rescue Plan allocation. Here's the other thing to be aware of. Detroit's not an island. State of Michigan is getting more than $6 billion. We could partner with the state on any number of projects. Detroit Public Schools are getting more than $800 million directly. Uh, and Wayne County is getting $340 million. So we're going to be talking to the state. We're going to be talking to the schools. We're going to talk be talking to the county. And where can you take the city money, the schools money, the state money, the county money, and do projects together? And my guess is that the state and the schools and the county we'll all do similar kinds of outreach efforts. So, here's the question. How should we spend the $426 million over the next three years? And today, as I say, is just the start of the conversation. Council needs to take some action in June, but they'll have another budget for 23, they'll have another budget for 24, and then every time we want to have a project, we want to build an expansion of the Farwell Rec Center, we're going to have to go to council, they'll approve it. There'll be a hundred more council votes after this month. But what we're asking right now is, let's set the vision as a community. What do we want to do? So. We will hold out of this administration 25 community meetings in the next 25 days to get your input. City Council's also holding its own meetings. We're working closely with Council in joint working groups because we would like to get this money in the hands of Detroiters by July to start making things better. And so it's going to take a whole lot of work on both sides over the next six weeks. Um, so. What can we spend the money on? I told you what we can't spend it on. We can't spend it on pensions. We can't spend it on debt. We can't spend it on uh, liabilities. Here's what we can spend it on. Uh, the, right now, what we know is this. You can use it to address the negative economic impacts of COVID. You can use it to rebuild a stronger, more equitable economy as the country recovers. You can use it to address the systematic challenges of low-income communities and people of color. Uh, this is an opportunity this country has never taken before, and I can't imagine a more appropriate day to be talking about this, because in this last year, we saw uh, the racial disparities in the healthcare system when COVID hit, and we saw the racial disparities in the criminal justice system uh, in the murder of George Floyd a year ago. And all of it comes back to the fundamental inequities between blacks and whites in our economy. Uh, and this is a chance uh, for us to rectify a lot of wrongs if we do it correctly. So by and large, we should be building uh, a city that's inclusive and that's equitable with this money. So I'm going to give you my idea on how to do it, which has been developed with the staff here. I say it's my idea. There's a lot of people who put it together. But this is just one idea. And then we're going to ask you for your ideas. And over the next six or eight weeks, council have ideas, et cetera. The final version will probably look very different. But let me just give you an idea to start the conversation. One is, I think we ought to take $100 million and use it to fight intergenerational poverty. Go at this issue hard like this city and really this country never has. I think we put $100 million into restoring our neighborhoods so that our children are raised in environments uh, that they can be proud of and not uh, that have long-term effects. 
I think we ought to put another $100 million into our parks or recreation and cultural facilities, $50 million more into improving public safety, $50 million more into reducing the digital divide so the internet is, access, is, is available to everybody in Detroit, and another $26 million in small business, primarily to entrepreneurs of color. That's my idea. This can be changed a dozen different ways. There could be different categories. But I'm just having this conversation to give you a sense of how transformational this investment can be if we do it right. And so let me take you through some ideas that we have, and then I'm going to open up the phone lines and hear the ideas that you have. But let's start with, if you had $100 million to fight intergenerational poverty, you've got to spend it in the next three years. And here's the thing to remember. We can't have ongoing expenses. The money's going to be gone in 2024. So if somebody wants to say to me, uh, uh, hire 200 more firefighters, we can't do that because we just have to lay them off in three years. These have to be uh, expenditures that are complete in three years and don't have a permanent deficit. So what might we do? I'd start with expanding the community health corps take 1,200 to 1,800 of our residents in the most extreme poverty. This has been one of the most remarkable things we've done that's been led by Deputy Mayor Conrad Mallett. But we have been going door to door to some of the poorest homes in this city. We have found uh, uh, families with children who need food and didn't know how to get on a bridge card because it was too complicated. Literally, they were driving up to get boxes of food to get by from one day to the next. We helped them apply for that. We had people whose houses were in such bad shape, they were about to be moved to the street. We got them to emergency housing. We got people who clearly had mental health needs. We got them to mental health services, uh, stabilized the child care situation. And so what we found is that you have got a lot of uh, families in the city who are just struggling just to get to the next day. You can't talk to them about getting a job or going to school or anything. They're just trying to get diapers for the baby tomorrow. And the Community Health Corps goes in and sits down and says, let's talk about all that's going on in your life. And the city government is here to help you. And we're going to bring in the state government, the county government, the federal government. Uh, I'd like to reach 12 to 1,800 more people than we're reaching now. That's something we could do if we applied $30 million. Is it worth it? to us to take 12 of our 1,800 most needy citizens and give them that kind of support. Skills for Life program. Uh, I'd like to see us put maybe $40 million into this. And think about uh, this, that what if we had a program that said, we will hire you as a Detroiter? In fact, I think we have the potential to put, offer jobs to pretty much anybody in Detroit who wants one. And we'll start you at $12 an hour, whether you're boarding up homes or cutting grass or whatever it is. And if you have a high school degree, we'll pay you $15 an hour. But if you don't have a high school degree, we'll pay you five days a week. Come do the work in the community three days. Two days a week, go to class. And we'll pay you on the days that you go to class. Because remember, what are we trying to do? This money is going to be gone in three years. We want you to have credentials for the rest of your life. We're filling $36,000 jobs at the Jeep plant on Mac. Uh, that are great jobs with benefits, but you have to have a high school degree. What would happen if we paid folks to both work and do work for the community and get the degree? Or what if you already have your high school degree, uh, but you want to have some other type of skills? You want to be a nurse assistant. You want to be a tree trimmer. You want to drive a truck. You want to be a carpenter. Whatever your skills might be. What if we ran a program that paid you three days a week to do the work for us and two days a week to get those skills? Uh, for wealthy communities, uh, families spend four years of tuition, put their kids through college to get certificates and the like to earn money the rest of their lives. Could we spend the next few years with Detroiters and pay money for them to go to school and finish with those degrees? So when this program's over in 2024, our residents have the ability to earn a good middle class or better than middle class living. Would that be worth us putting $40 million out? That's a conversation that we ought to talk about. Third, I want to do targeted employment uh, among the 16 to 24-year-olds with criminal justice contacts who have been close to the criminal justice system, maybe been convicted, uh, maybe been, been, 
been that. And I'm spending a lot of time with a fellow by the name of Ray Winans on the east side doing just a remarkable job. And I've spent a fair amount of time with these young people. Uh, and uh, uh, they didn't grow up saying, I wanted to get into illegal activities. They felt like that was the only economic means available. But when you say to uh, a number of these young men, and I've spent a lot of time with them, in some cases young women, but mostly young men, and you say, what's going on? There are a lot of things. It's not like you say, here's a job, get started. I don't have a driver's license. Maybe I was driving dirty, or maybe I never got one in the first place. I don't have mobility. Uh, my housing situation. I'm surprised as I talk to these individuals how many have told me I'm squatting illegally in a land bank house. I'm happy that they feel confident enough to tell me about it and I'm not going to do anything. But you realize how unstable their lives are from day to day. That is, we have a lot of talent among these young people who may have gotten to the wrong side of the law. If we can put that talent to good use, we are much stronger as a community. Is that worth this kind of investment. Do these young folks deserve it? I think as a community, that's a conversation uh, that we have. Um, I'd like to see us employ seniors as mentors to help families. I have not been to a senior center where somebody didn't raise their hand and say, I don't feel like I just want to be retired. I still have something to offer. Isn't there a role for me? What if we hired our seniors who still wanted to work to mentor uh, those folks who wanted to go a different direction in their lives? Could we put our seniors to work as well as our young people? Is that something we should do as a city? Here's something that I think is a huge hole. That is, if you need affordable housing, I defy you to find it today. Uh, you call a whole bunch of different people. You call each individual apartment. Maybe they put you on hold. Maybe they talk to you, et cetera. There's no way for you to figure out what affordable units are there today. It's going to be a huge undertaking. It's going to be $7 million for our housing and revitalization department to do this. But I want to see us build a system that if you uh, need affordable housing and you're kind of getting desperate, you can go to one site and see where every affordable unit is and what the qualifications are. How much more stable would our housing situation be if we built that? Should we build that out as something to fight the insecurities uh, that come from intergenerational poverty? And then we got all kinds of support on uh, home foreclosures. We've cut the houses foreclosures by 95% in this city. Uh, and Treasurer Eric's at Breeze done a great job. But the biggest problem we still have is folks who don't know that many of our poorest folks are not surfing the internet to see what the latest assistance program is. We gotta go into the house, knock on the door, and I'd like to see us spend $3 million and make a commitment to go to every one of those houses every year so that we provide every opportunity for people to keep their homes. Is that how you'd spend $100 million in intergenerational poverty? That's something that I think we talk about tonight. How'd you spend $100 million? to restore uh, the neighborhoods. Again, everybody who's a block club captain has their own ideas. Let me give you some of my ideas tonight to get us started. Uh, the first thing I do is I do grants to block clubs and neighborhood associations to improve vacant land from the land bank. That is, the land bank owns tens of thousands of vacant parcels. And there are a lot of block clubs, neighborhood associations that said, I'd like to take those three parcels, maybe make a garden, maybe put in a bench, maybe create a parklet uh, across the city, but uh, we don't have the money to do that. What would happen if we set up a program where we said, as a neighborhood group or a block club, if you took two or three or four more of these parcels, uh, what would come with it would be a grant, $2,500, $5,000 for you to take those parcels and turn them into neighborhood centers that would be the right thing for your neighborhood. We could take the vacant land we have in the city, move it from the land bank into the hands of the neighbors, let the neighbors reuse it to the vision of your neighborhood. I don't want to tell you what to do with the vacant lots in your neighborhood. Would it be worth a $10 million investment? so that every block club and neighborhood association wanted to take those properties had some help. Is that something you would like to see from this city? How about home repairs to seniors and other low-income families? Uh, we've got a program now at five or six million dollars a year. It's a long wait list and we don't get to nearly uh, the number of folks that we ought to. Uh, but when we do, we're able to do a lot of good. And I'll tell you where I'd really like to see a start is the roofs. 
Uh, I d can't tell you the number of times somebody said to me, I've lived in this house for 30 or 40 years. The roof is going. I don't have the money to fix it. And once the water starts to come in through your roof, everything else in your house is in jeopardy. What if we roll through the city and fix thousands of roofs for low-income seniors or other low-income families to stabilize their situation? Is that something that we should be doing? Uh, we have to get through and clean out these vacant properties. I mean, we've got 80,000 properties. I don't have to tell you. We've got dead trees. We've got garbage col uh, collecting. We've got collapsed garages. We've got rusted and rotting fences. Uh, the backyards, a lot of these land bank houses, raccoons, God knows what's living in the piles in the back. What if we rolled through this city and cleaned all of those out and hired Detroiters to do it? Would that be something that you would think is worth it for your neighborhood? Uh, and you know what this looks like. Uh, we need to go through the city again uh, in a very intense way. And what if we cleaned it out and then we sold it to the, the neighborhood group and gave them a grant to fix it up and keep it permanently as a garden? How much better would our neighborhoods be? Uh, how about down payment assistance? We have a whole lot of people in this city uh, who have gone from homeowners to renters, particularly in the Great Recession in 2009. What if we offered down payment assistance to get these folks back into having Detroiters buying houses, particularly the land bank houses? Go from being a renter to owning your own house again. Uh, could we get back to a city of home ownership and would down payment assistance be an important priority to you to see happen in your neighborhood? Uh, and then the streetscapes. Um, You've seen what's happened in some of the commercial districts. We put money into Livernois, and we put money uh, into West McNichols, and into a number of other cities where the entire uh, local shopping district just breathes new life into it and brings vibrancy to the neighborhood. Would you like us to see, uh, would you like to see us put that kind of money into more of these kinds of streetscapes? The alleys, as you know, we are cleaning out. Some of the neighborhoods don't think cleaning out is enough. They actually want to make the alleys a center of activity. And so some of them are doing absolutely beautiful things, planning things, putting in gazebos, uh, putting in um, uh, different gardens, solar panels and the like. They're actually making the alleys centers of community activity, not a place where weed grows or somebody dumps the tires. Would you like to see us put more money to the neighborhood groups to activate their alleys? And this is a small thing, but this is Brad Dick's idea, uh, is he loves the neighborhood signs. Uh, what if we had $2 million so that every neighborhood association in the city could put out a first-class sign and reflect the pride in their neighborhood? Is that a good expenditure of money? These are things that I want to talk about. Uh, and I'll give you a sense of the way we are viewed in Washington, D.C. You might not know it uh, to read some of the local coverage, but across America, what we have done in the neighborhoods is a national story. The fact that we got 15,000 abandoned houses down, but we got 8,000 vacant houses renovated and fixed up and moved families in. So this is today's newspaper, today's Wall Street Journal. The big article is that President Biden's neighborhood revitalization plan is based on Detroit's rehabbed and ready program renovating houses and neighborhoods. President Biden wants to have the national infrastructure plan. This isn't even what's been passed. This is what he's proposing next. He wants to have a national infrastructure plan to renovate vacant houses and move families in using the city of Detroit model. And President Biden and I were vice president. He and I drove these neighborhoods multiple times. He can actually tell you how the land bank auction uh, process works. Uh, and so he has taken this national. This is the way we're viewed across the country. Uh, and there'll be lots of support from D.C. if we put together a real neighborhood plan. Do you want to see us invest $100 million in parks, recreation, and cultural facilities? We've done a lot of work already. How much does it matter uh, when we improve the parks and the like? What if we put $50 million of this into parks and walking past the Joe Louis Greenway? How much does it matter when we took these old uh, neglected parks and one after another fixed them up? Does it matter to your neighborhood, and is it worth the investment? And the Joe Lewis Greenway, which if you're over in the Joy or Warren or Livernois area, you know all about this because this is transformational, but it's going to go in a 26-mile loop around this city, basically kind of up the DeQuinta Joseph Campo area, up to McNichols, and then down through west and southwest Detroit. Um, but if you go over now to the... Um, uh, 
uh, the Livernois Joy Warren area, and this is a stretch from Oakman to Fullerton. We're taking basically abandoned railroad tracks and these kinds of things that look like this, and we're rebuilding them to look like that. This area on Linwood, you see how you look down that and how neglected it looks? A lot of these are abandoned paths between auto scrapyards. This is how it's going to be rebuilt. The neighborhoods along here are excited. We are taking some of the neighbors who have felt the most forgotten for the most years and are going to rebuild this kind of beautiful amenity for their children and their families using ultimately it'll connect to the riverfront, it'll connect neighborhoods to each other. Is this an important expenditure of money for the rest of the city? These are things that we can talk about. How about rec centers? Um, we still have areas of the city that don't have any rec centers, and we have areas of the city, city that have small rec centers that really need to be expanded. Could we put $30 million into building and expanding rec centers? Would that be a good expenditure of money? And how about our arts and cultural investments? How important are they to this city to put money into the Charles Wright Museum? The Ocean Sweet House that sits at Garland near Charlevoix, uh, which the owner's family is, is putting into what will be a museum for people to remember uh, that day in the 1920s when Dr. Sweet and his family had to defend their house for an attack on a mob. Can we reinstate that area of Garland back to the way it looked in the 1920s to tell that story? And the Motown Museum expansion, how much would it matter if we got that done? Should we contribute to this? Is that something you think we should be doing with these funds? Public safety, there are two things. The speeding and drifting in this city and the gun violence are ridiculous. Uh, in everything we are doing, and, and Chief White's going to start another week, uh, it is going to be all about dealing with the speeding and drifting and dealing with the gun violence. But what would we do right now that would help the police? So I'd say to start with, dealing with the speeding and drifting, I'd like to see us put $60 million right away into buying 100 more patrol cars and another helicopter because the way we want to deal with these drifters is not to engage in a high-speed chase across the city putting our residents at risk, but to track them from helicopter and then seize the car when they stop. We have enough officers and jobs that could be deployed to the street. We don't have enough police cars. How much safer would this city be if you had 100 more traffic enforcement cars out on the street every day. I am so tired. I see people in front of me run red lights and stop signs like they don't exist or blow by you at 70 or 80 miles an hour. I'd like to see us make that a point of emphasis. Is that your priority? The gun violence. Uh, we are having some real significant success with ShotSpotter, which basically what ShotSpotter does is it just listens uh, to uh, the sound of gunshots, and we deploy immediately several major arrests because the police were able to respond so quickly. Uh, and I want intersection cameras to catch the drive-by shooters. And I really don't want to hear anything about facial recognition. Intersection cameras have no ability to get faces or do facial recognition. They are not used in any way. What they do do is recognize vehicles. So when we know a Red Explorer at 2.12 a.m. was just engaged in a drive-by shooting off of Evergreen, we can look at the camera, see which direction it has, see if we can see a license plate, see if we can see distinguishing features on the car, track where it went. Uh, we have every day drive-by shootings where we have descriptions of the car. What if we gave police the ability to see where those cars went and get these shooters? Could we change the level of violence along with all the other things we're doing? This is a conversation we need to have as a community. Of course. Uh, we ought to have uh, a state-of-the-art training facility. There's never been more demand on police officers uh, to both protect the public and make certain to treat every single citizen with respect in every interaction. Shouldn't we upgrade to a modern training facility? And the Detroit Fire Department. As you know, the fire engines are now medical first responders. There's a number of times when the fire engine gets to you first to stabilize you until the ambulance gets there. But we have four places in the city we'd love to build an ambulance bay at the firehouse. So what's responding to you quickly is both the fire engine and the ambulance cut our 911 response time. Would it be worth $10 million to build four new uh, ambulance centers in neighborhoods in this city? These are things that we can talk about. Reducing the digital divide. You've probably heard about it, but you might not know what it means. And what it means is this, that what is happening in this world is people who have access to the Internet 
have huge numbers of advantages. Students with access to the Internet have enormous advantages over our students who don't. Uh, people looking for jobs have enormous advantages. People who just want health care have enormous advantages. We have, we're going to have an equitable city. Internet connection has to be available to everybody, not just the well-off. For $50 million, we could actually do it. And Beth Niblock, uh, who, as far as I'm concerned, is the best IT director in America, she's got a plan. And for six years, she's been asking me for $50 million to do it. Now, you're going to get a chance to decide whether you think it's important. There's actually only four parts. It's really not that complicated. If you or your children or your family need a connection to the Internet, one, you need a device. You need a laptop or a tablet. You can do things off your smartphone, but that's, it's not nearly the advantage of a laptop or a tablet. Second, you've got to be connected to the Internet because otherwise it doesn't do you any good. And that means somebody could hand you a tablet, but if you don't have Wi-Fi at your house, uh, you're at a disadvantage. So we've got to make sure that you can get on the Internet. Third, we have to make sure you know how to use it. Uh, and that means that being able to call somebody any time or day or night, if you can't figure out how to get on or you just need the, the instruction to help on how to do a particular function, what if you had access to tech support? And then four, when we start to provide our kids with this kind of access, I guarantee you there is going to be a huge number of children and young people in this city who are going to be naturally gifted to the IT field. We want to make sure they have access to IT jobs and careers. Every IT hiring center I've seen has not been any a model of diversity. Uh, young men and women of color are just not getting into the IT jobs. What if we built access here in Detroit like no place else in the country? And so here's what we could do for $50 million if you think this is important. We can take the other 40,000 students who haven't gotten devices and provide laptops to them. We could go to every single Detroit Public Library and put laptops in that you can go in and check out for a week or two, just like you check out a book. Take it home and use it and bring it back a week or two later. Get up to speed. See if this is something you want to do. What if the laptops were available to you at your library? What if we went to 10,000 low-income seniors and said, uh, you should be connected with the world, whether it's your family, your friends, or your interests? Uh, and what if we got laptops to every low-income senior in this city? And then what if we went into our affordable housing units and provided free Wi-Fi to everybody in those units? So you're a person of low income. You're already you're raising children in a way that have got disadvantages. But if you've got a laptop and Wi-Fi in every single affordable housing unit in the city, now you're as connected as the folks in Birmingham. We actually can do this within this budget. Uh, and when you get on the DDOT bus, you'll have free Wi-Fi no matter what bus. We've already done it on the Connect 10 buses, but let's extend it to all DDOT buses. Uh, and let's go to churches and nonprofits and set up uh, Wi-Fi access points there too, so that no matter where you go, you can readily get on to the internet. And let's have somebody available 24 hours a day who when you want to know how something is done, you're not sitting there frustrated, well, maybe I've got to find my grandkid uh, to help me through this, but what if you had IT tech support because you're a Detroit resident and we want you to know how to use the internet? And then uh, I'd like to see us with a thousand corporate sponsored training and apprenticeship programs so that our talented young people at 14, 15, 16, 18, 20 can get tracked into these jobs, tracked into these careers. These big downtown businesses, uh, you look at Ford Motor Company, they're going to hire 5,000 people over at the train station around there to design the electric and automated vehicles of the future. Let's track Detroiters to fill those jobs. Our kids have the talent, they haven't had the roadmap before. We could, with a $50 million investment over three years, build that roadmap. Is that a priority for you? And then small business assistance. Uh, there's no doubt Motor City Match uh, has been uh, the great success. Let's double the graphs. We've got 120 businesses opened in Detroit because of it, 81% owned by entrepreneurs of color. These are, by and large, folks who don't have wealthy parents or friends to give them the loan to start the business. They wouldn't have had the means to do it, but because they were in the city of Detroit, the city was there to help them with that initial grant. Let's open that program and double the startups. If instead of 120 businesses, we opened 240, run overwhelmingly by Detroiters, how much better would we be? And then what we call Motor City Restore. 
let's double that. You may not have heard of this, but this is for existing businesses whose storefronts are kind of run down. We do a 50-50 match, and they redo the outside of the store. So it's a boost to business to the folks who have been there. And every time we do a streetscape, our first problem is we overload it with traffic. Uh, and I'd like to see us buy off-street parking. If we're going to redo a street, let's set aside parking. So this is a parking lot off of Livernoy that the city operates. Uh, because when you don't do this, this is the way our orders are starting to, to look. They're getting double parked. It's hurting the businesses. People can't get in and out. What if we took $10 million and went to our high uh, volume commercial districts? and took the vacant lands and turned them into parking lots so you could get in and out of the store easier and our businesses would have more customers. Is that something that you would like to see? This is one set of ideas I have for $426 million. And I want to now start a conversation uh, with what you want. But before we do, I have one other thing that we need to talk about. There's again a conversation that we need to have as a community. Because there's been a great deal of talk about over-assessments in this city. And over-assessments happened uh, in the early part of the last decade. And people, there are people who never got their money back. Now, we cannot, uh, with the American Rescue Plan money, pay old debts. But we could potentially give those folks preference on all these programs I just told you about. So here's my question to you. When we roll out all these programs, should they be open equally to everybody? Or should we give preference to those who ended up getting over-assessed? Should they be at the front of the line? Uh, and so uh, we could potentially set up something that says for the home repair money, for the, uh, the computers, uh, for the job training, pretty much everything we've talked about, there's no reason we couldn't create a preference. I want to talk to you now about why City Council hasn't done anything yet. And as we decide about the equity going forward, we need to make a decision about what's fair equity about something that happened years ago. And I'll go back over what happened to those who were here lived it. But we know what happened in the Great Recession. From 2009 to 2010, home sale prices in this city dropped 60%. I never seen anything like it. And lots of people just walked away. Uh, but in the last administration, the blue line is the, the home sale price. The orange line is what the city said you were assessed at. The orange line should always be below the blue line under Michigan law. But in 2011, the city did not drop the assessments as far as home prices went. And that red hatched area was areas where people, I believe, were assessed at higher than the actual price. And uh, we had this issue in lots of parts of the state, but the rest of the state fixed it. But this was a big issue in 2011. Uh, and in 2012, the city still didn't drop it. And the Detroit Auditor General uh, criticized what was going on. In 2013, I talked about it every day on the campaign trail, how unfair this was, and that as soon as I got in, I was going to deal with it. It was a big part of why a lot of folks supported me. Uh, and my very first month in office, January 2014, we cut assessments across this city 22%. Now, a number of people had appealed their assessments, and a lot of people, that appeals process is a very complicated thing. They just ended up getting hit with the higher amounts. So in 2014, the line started to go the right direction. The assessment line should always, the orange line should always be under the actual home sale price line. We got it there, but that doesn't mean everybody was assessed fairly. Um, and then the question is, where did the money go? So when you pay your property taxes, most of it goes to the schools, and then the city, then the county, then the community college and others. And so I don't know whether the Detroit Public Schools or Wayne County or anybody else wants to give preference to people who uh, paid them more in taxes than they probably should have back then, but at least in the city of Detroit side, we should ask, do we want to do this? And so now, uh, our home sale prices have gone up dramatically in the last few years. You know that. Uh, they're well above uh, the, the assessor's value. Um, and so here's the question. Should we give preference to the affected Detroit homeowners? And here's the question that has caused city council so far to be deadlocked. 
Okay, what years do you give preference on? One possibility is this. What if we said anybody in this city who was a homeowner in 2009 and 2014 that lived there, owner-occupied house, what if every single one of those folks got preference for every home repair program, every property purchase program, every job training program, every computer program? What if they went to the front of the line? Would that be a fair thing to do or not a fair thing to do? The reason this broke down at city council is half of city council members thought this was the right thing to do. The other half thought you should go all the way to 2016, that if somebody bought a house for the first time in 2015 or 2016, they should also get the preference. And it's kind of an interesting question. Um, and so if, if you did this, and this is the other option, let's give a preference for everybody who owned a house, whatever. So in 2015, uh, where that circle is, while overall the assessments were low, there are still individual people who could have not been treated fairly. That just means the city as a whole was all right. And so there are some who say on council that there were some folks in 2015, even though it was going the right direction, were uh, over uh, assessed. And they think that the preference period should be from 2019 to 2009 to 2016. What the other side of the city council says, wait a minute, if you bought a house in the city of Detroit in 2015, you made a lot of money. The average home price has gone up more than 100%. So even if you got a little bit of a bad deal in 2015, you didn't suffer through the drop in 2009, 2010, 2011. Those folks should get the preference. And so basically half a council thinks the people in 2015 and 2016 should get the preference. Half the council thinks it should stop in 2014. And because of that, we're deadlocked and we have no solution. And so I will support, as I've said, whatever council decides, I'll support either one. And maybe you can help them in this conversation. Because one of the things I'm going to ask you as you call in is, which one of these choices do you believe? Do you think it should be preference to homeowners in 20, 2009 to 2014? Do you think it should be the second option, everybody who bought a house in 15 and 16? Or are you a renter and don't think any homeowner should get any preference at all? Uh, whichever one of those three things that you believe, I'd like you just to share your preference as one of the things that you do. So now we're going to turn this over to you uh, because I want to hear your ideas. Which of these areas would you increase or decrease when you call in? I want you to call and tell me, you know what? I'd like to see more money in parks. You know what? I'd like to see more money in small business. Or I have an idea that you didn't even put up there. Let me tell you my idea. But if you're going to tell me the area you're going to increase, you also have to tell me the area you're going to cut because we have to balance this. And it's easy for everybody to call up and say, put more money into everything. And so if you have an idea on what you'd like to see increase, tell me what you'd like to see decrease. Tell me your ideas that we haven't brought up. And then tell me, uh, whether you think the homeowners from earlier in the decade uh, deserve preference. So uh, we will be, over the next 25 days, having 25 meetings. This is only the first one, and council, will, I'm sure, will have a lot more. So you can go to DetroitMI.gov. There's going to be in-person meetings. There's going to be Zoom meetings. Uh, we want you to uh, get on and advocate for your vision of the city as many times as you want. I want the most intense community engagement this city has ever had because this is going to drive our vision for what an equitable Detroit looks like. So now, this is your turn. Uh, so if you haven't done this before, um, uh, we're going to take our callers. Uh, if you're on your computer, use your raise hand icon. If you're on your phone, press star 9. Tell me your name and what neighborhood you live in. And then tell me, what do you like? What, you, what don't you like? What would you like to see increased or decreased? Uh, and what's your idea? And we're going to ask you, please, to try to be concise and, and keep it to 60 seconds, uh, because after 60 seconds, you're going to be muted, because I want to get through as many people uh, as we can and get as many perspectives as we can uh, on what you think about this vision. And then you're going to have another chance and another chance and another chance as we do meetings across this community. So with that, uh, we will uh, start taking questions. We're going to go till 8.30. And let's start with our first caller. Start and tell us your name and what neighborhood you're from. First caller we have is Brian L. Brian L., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. 
Uh, my name is Brian Lewis. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I have a question for you. Um, you, um, what, what would I have a question? Uh, I, I'm, I, I have a brilliant idea. I think Good. this. I'm listening. I. Okay, I'm thinking. You know those uh, abandoned schools? They could be used for uh, uh, housing. All right. So you'd like to see us put money on the neighborhood side and put housing in the abandoned schools? That's a great idea. Yes. Oh, you're on a roll. Do you have another brilliant idea? I like that. What's the next one? So we're gonna we're gonna keep every track every one of these. Go ahead. Fifteen seconds. How about upgrading traffic signals? Upgrade from. Um, Overhead cables to tubular steel mast arms. You're you on I, all intersections. I, I'm with you on that one too. That those those wires are awful, aren't they? Uh, that's great. Yeah, it okay. makes our city look rural. It it really does. I am with you a hundred percent on that one too. Before I lose you, I want you to vote. Do you think we should give preference on people who owned houses uh, uh, during the recession? I think so, yes. So would you pick Most the definitely. 2014 option or the 2016 option? Uh, the 2016 option. All right, one vote for 2016. We're going to record these. Thank you very much. All right, two great ideas right out of the gate. Who's next? Next caller we have is Tim J. Tim J., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute to ask your question. Hey, Duggan, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Tell us what neighborhood Good. you're from. I'm in Lafayette Park. Okay. Yeah, so definitely I think when you look at Detroit, the thing that we get criticized the most and your potential opponents, um, they talk about the crime. So definitely seeing more investment in public safety because I think if you make the city much safer, everything else kind of takes care of itself. I mean, you've done a good job with bringing in businesses. We have great industries here. But definitely when you look at even like, you know, our neighbors off of uh, Jefferson, right? You talked about all the cars, you know, speeding up and down yeah, and driving it every day. like a racetrack at night. I, I drive and it every day. Even, so let me ask you this. Yeah, even, if we increase public safety, what would you reduce on this list? Yeah, I think I would reduce maybe some of the things for like extra parks and, and okay. recreation. Good. Uh, because once again, the tax oh. dollars kind of take care of itself. If you oh. take care of crime, more people want to come to the city, which helps fund, you know, everything else. So, uh, and would you give homeowners from the last decade preference on the programs? Um, I mean, I, I think I think that's a that's a tough question. I mean, I I would say yes, just because they okay. they deserve it. They were here first. So, so do you kinda, want the fourteen you know, option or the sixteen option? Um. I would say the 16 option. All right. Go ahead. We, we're off to two votes for 16. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, who's next? Next caller we have is Frank H. Frank H., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hello. My name is Karen Hammer. I've lived in three Detroit neighborhoods. The most recent is Green Acres Woodward. And uh, I think that your uh, fighting poverty and the digital divide are good ideas. I think that the focus should be uh, on the frontline communities, the poorest communities. And I think you should focus on energy efficiency so that homes and small businesses uh, will have uh, lower energy bills uh, through retrofitting. And this would be a permanent way to make progress in reducing carbon emissions. And you could hire Detroit youth to do the retrofitting. And this is a job that never disappears. In seconds. They will always have work. Seconds. That, that's a great idea. Uh, and in fact, we've been talking about what different jobs we train and hire for. But I love uh, the idea of both reducing the, uh, the utility expense for our residents, reducing our uh, our carbon footprint in providing jobs. Uh, if you had a choice on homeowners getting preference, would you choose 14, 16, or no homeowner preference? I would not make a choice. I think 
uh, all homeowners, especially those who lost their homes, should be made uh, should be given the preference, whatever the year. Okay. Uh, all right. Who's next? Next caller we have is M. L. Elric. Okay. You, may, you have one minute. It's campaign season. Uh, Your Honor, is is there any possibility of reallocating some money to free up some money that's in the budget to use to offset the overassessment? In other words, use some of the money that uh, that we can have discretionary use of, and then use the ARP money to fill in those gaps. Yeah. So there's no legal way to get there. Okay. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I guess I would go with uh, 14. Okay, 14. And uh, of the things on this list, which one do you think is the highest priority? Um, the neighborhood investment. Okay. We, we see a lot of people who are in neighborhoods that are on the rise but can't afford to keep their houses up. And so they, uh, they're concerned about getting blight tickets that they can't pay. They're concerned about repairs that they can't pay. And they're afraid of losing their homes in neighborhoods that are just okay. rebounding. And so they're afraid they're going to miss all right. their so, part all right. of the. Uh, so I, I know I rate. know you're running for office, but do you have the courage to tell us what you'd reduce to pay for more neighborhood assessment? Neighborhood investment. Um, sure, uh, I, I would. I think I would uh, I would take some of the reducing the digital divide money out of there. Okay. Because and, and for what it's worth, I'm hearing this because I'm knocking on doors and talking to people. But I think we can try and fill in some of that gap, okay. as you did during the summer with foundation money, with nonprofit money, with corporations who are willing to donate the computers, the capacity, the bandwidth. Uh, it's a tough choice, obviously, right. but we need to make tough choices right. to help people be made whole. I, I'm impressed. Uh, so great conversation. All right. Who's next? Next caller we have is Ethelyn C. Ethan, you may omit yourself. You have one minute. Okay. Hello. Good, um, good evening. Tell us what neighborhood you're from. Uh, the original Old West Side. Okay. Historic. All right. Um, I would want to improve the neighborhoods. I would want at least $50 million. I would take that from, uh, I would en encourage the Reduce the digital divide by encouraging businesses to donate okay. more. All right. I would, and I would reduce um, the fight intergenerational inter property. I would take money from there. Okay. What's and, the most important and, neighborhood investment thing you would like to see us do? I, I want home repair grants okay. for all, not necessarily low income because those of us who are lived in our homes 50, 60 years, we cannot afford to keep our homes up and we are all not low income. So I want monies for that. Just low income grants for long time residents, not necessarily low income residents. So, so then I think I know the answer on this, but on homeowners for preference, uh, would you have it be people before 14 or people before 2016? Um, 14, okay. but I'm not opposed. No, I, I, I got gotcha. you. Uh, okay. And so, uh, this is, this is something that we have the potential to be able to do. I mean, we do have the, the, our biggest issue actually may be finding enough workmen or work women to do all of the, uh, the repairs in the, uh, the houses. But, uh, this is something that sounds like people are really interested in. Okay. Who's next? Next caller with the name Resident. Resident, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Uh, yes, good evening. Good um, evening. Yes, uh, for sure to have uh, recreation centers in all neighborhoods and also to have functioning pools so children and adults can learn to swim. Um, okay, what and, would you uh, reduce in order to pay for that? Pardon? Which one of these things would you reduce if we were to build more rec centers? Is there something on here that's a lower priority for you? Well, you know, 
Probably public safety, because my view is the more we invest okay. in people and youth and activities for them the, and okay. things like that, hopefully the whole public safety issue would be a different question. But the other thing I wanted to say, and I'm glad you're asking us for our input, because in my neighborhood, there is land bank land that many of us would like to keep as a green space. And also, I think it's important to consider across the city seconds, master green seconds. space planning in every neighborhood, because I think every great city in every great neighborhood has great green spaces, you know, like. So, right. uh, so what, what, neighborhood, a, what neighborhood do you live in? Well, I live in the North End, but as you know, there's a problem about a plan oh, that's being yeah. considered. Yeah, okay, we, we could talk. We, could, we, could, we were not, uh, we were not that, consulted, that, and I would love to have yeah. the same kind of community engagement. And if you may permit me, Mayor, I think what's important, because I hear there's a lot of other development coming out online. Okay, and I want so we're, we're sticking, I'm sorry, but we're sticking, I want to be respectful here, but we're sticking to budget tonight. Uh, so uh, I'm deeply engaged, and I'm going to try to get you to a solution on that development uh, that everybody could live with. But here would be my question to you on the neighborhood investment. Would you see your neighbors uh, taking the vacant lots if there were grants uh, to fix them up and keep them as green space? Do you see your neighbors taking that issue on? Oh, yes, I do. Okay. I, I absolutely. One person is a... Uh, very skilled at farming. And, and, and the other thing is because it's next to a very popular park, Dolores Bennett right, Playground, right. my concern is that we have the extra space right. when all this other development well, well, comes well, online. I, I, so it's not I, a super I'm, I'm gonna park. I'm gonna build you a second park if that happens because we don't have, Dolores Bennett takes the whole block, but I'm gonna build you a second park if we get to that. Last question. Uh, do you think homeowners should get preference? And if you do, the ones before 14 or the ones before 16? I'm sorry, when you said preference, you mean? In all of our programs. I don't know if you heard that part. In the programs. Well, you know, first of all, like that 50% land bank discount, I think that should be given to all Detroiters, period, okay. uh, right. on land bank so, auction so, properties. So, so no preference. But the other thing, okay. I, 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 you know, I, I that would, I think, a survey of a, a survey of, of overtaxed people right. uh, would right. be a good thing to engage in. And um, yeah, right. I, I helped somebody out who wasn't supposed to be taxed, and so, you know, I kind of put in right. when it wasn't ne necessary. So I, I, I don't. I, Thank you. Okay, I got, I got it. This is great, and you can see why council is so divided. We're doing a survey now, and it's coming just as divided as council. But those are great suggestions, and I will stay on your issue until we work something out in the north end that's fair. All right, who's next? Next caller we have is Melanie M. Melanie, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for holding this series of public meetings. Good evening. My name is Melanie Markowitz, and I'm a proud resident of West Village. I also represent Greektown Neighborhood Partnership, a nonprofit community development organization. Uh, this past year has really underscored the importance of public spaces, parks, and streetscapes on the health and vitality of our city, its impact on residents and also small business owners across the broad spectrum of, of the whole city entirely. Um, in, in downtown, uh, Greektown is a place where Detroiters can continue to feel authentically welcome in our downtown. And we have much need there to improve park spaces and streetscapes to support public safety, increase access, welcome Detroiters in a great environment, and support small businesses that have been deeply affected by the impacts of COVID-19. Uh, so, if, if if, if so let me ask you this. If your priority is, mm -hmm. is parks and the like, what on here is a lower priority for you? You know, I, I really like the Joe Lewis Greenway parks, walking past East Riverfront. Um, I might take a look at, um, you know, is it a Detroiter? I, I would suggest taking a look um, at the allocations to some of the cultural institutions that have received so much public support in recent okay. years. So, so but you, I also might take a. Go ahead. I also, I also might take a look at, um, you know, what adjustments could be made to reducing uh, the digital divide as well. Okay, interesting. Um, and for home ownership as a resident, um, I, I'd like to see everybody, you know, 
assessed on an individual basis, but if I had to choose, I would choose the 2014 component. You should go for 14. All right, thank you very much. This is really helpful. Uh, uh, so who's next? We got another vote for 14. Uh, go ahead. Who's next? Tell us your name and what neighborhood you're in. Next this is caller we really have interesting. Is Trunetta R. Trunetta R. You may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Uh, hello, Mayor. Oh, I'm Trunetta Roach. I, I, I know what from neighborhood Sherwood you're Forest. from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm from Sherwood. Uh, and uh, I support the, an earlier caller who said that the, who was in charge, who supported uh, grants for home repairs mm -hmm. with no income requirements. We did. We do have a middle class in this in the city that's been supportive for decades. Paid their taxes, done the right thing, kept the communities well. But a lot of these older houses in Sherwood, Palmer, West East Village, uh, Indian Village, need repairs that cost a lot of money. It's ongoing, and I think that it would really be a good, um, a good gesture to recognize their importance to the city. To have a, to create a grant program that at least covered half of the costs. It's okay. been done before in 2011, okay. and uh, I think it's a good idea. Okay, so you want more money in home repairs and and not just low income. If you were to reduce something on here, what would it be? If I were to reduce something, it might be um, it might be rec centers, but not totally. Maybe okay. one or two rec centers okay. are important right. for the youth. Uh, but so is the digital divide. I wouldn't. I would not take okay. money from that. Uh, I would. Okay. Uh, last I would last question. Say, do you favor homeowner preference, and if you do, before fourteen or before two thousand sixteen? Before fourteen. Okay. All right. Thank you. All next, right. Who's next? Next caller we have is Linda B. Linda B. You may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Linda, are you with us? Next caller we have is T. Hankins. T. Hankins, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi, thank you. Um, I would like to say that what I didn't see on the list, for, oh, I'm sorry, first place I live in Russell Woods. Okay. Okay. And I would like to see on the list a distribution to the community groups to the magnitude of some of the other organizations that repeatedly get funded in the millions, number one. So I would distribution like to for what purpose? So tell me what, what we would fund the community groups to do. Whatever they're doing now on pennies and dollars and have to hold fundraisers for, they're in the community. They know exactly what that what's necessary in terms of public safety organizations, and police. We don't need we need to focus more money on prevention. The organizations in the neighborhood know those programs, but they don't have the funding to create the hundreds of jobs that can be created through that pro process, number one. Number two... Hang on, I, I want like to... Wait, 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 hang on a second, because I want to finish this. I agree with you completely. Uh -huh. We have to put more money behind nonprofits in this city to build capacity, but we're going to have to make choices about which nonprofits and which missions. We can't just give them out to everybody. So I, my question to you is, is, are there particular missions of nonprofits that you think we should be prioritizing? First, I don't think it should just be nonprofits. Okay. You might note that I said community groups, okay. social enterprises. Okay. But if it has to be a nonprofit uh, because of legal issues, then there are groups like Moratorium Now and other groups that are actually in the city working programs, helping with entrepreneurs, business organizations like the Thursday Luncheon Group that okay. are actually working in a community, but they do not have the resources right. of a list. Of no, you're right. Did we lose her? Okay. Um, all right, who's next? Next caller we have is Camille Ann B. Camille Ann B, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Thank you so much. Good evening, Good Mr. Evening. Mayor. My name is Camille Ann Brewer, 
and I live in the Near East Side neighborhood. I'm at Warren, Gratiot, and East Grand Boulevard. Okay. It's an interesting area where it's all roads to Enormous fly. potential um, in that area. <laughs> I left Detroit 20 years ago and I just returned. So um, I left and went to Atlanta, New York, Chicago, and DC. And so I'm coming, I'm from LA originally. So I'm coming with an eye, with, with different expectations for my city. And so it's exciting to be back and some things I, I'm a little frustrated with, but we're not here for that. You didn't really mention libraries. I know libraries so, have a millage, so but here, libraries- here, Let me talk to you about libraries for a second. Libraries are managed mm -hmm. by the Detroit Public Schools. And that's the reason we did not discuss them. So that's really a conversation uh, for the school board. Okay. Because it, it reaches digital divide issues, right. um, part you know recreation, cultural centers, um, all the, you know it hits three or four bases. Right, and so uh, I, I agree. I agree with you. I I think I think we need to have a serious conversation with the school board about the investment in the libraries. Uh, and, what uh, what else would you like to see as a priority? Um, I just would like to see. I'm a librarian. So I would like to okay. see that as a library, a neighborhood okay. investment. The libraries are cultural centers in our neighborhoods. Right. Um, you know, libraries provide uh, cultural activities, um, public safety. Um, okay. The libraries in Ferguson, Missouri, stayed open through okay. all of the Michael Brown. All right, I you can't, know, I can't, I can't help you on libraries. Is there anything else that you see as a priority here? Um. No, because I believe libraries hit All several right. of your bases. All right, well, you, ta um, you talk I to Dr. Vitti and the school board, because I think that is a really good conversation. Oh, People don't well, realize do this, this, but the city of Detroit does not run the libraries. The Detroit Public School Board runs the libraries. Thank you for that clarification right. about that. All right. I appreciate but, it. I have a priority on your question. Yeah. I do think people should be reimbursed, but the time frame, I don't have. I left. I left. I was gone during that time, and I've returned. So, um so do you vote I'll for 14, 16, or no preference? No preference. Okay. No preference. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. And good luck with the, with the libraries, because a whole lot of people here feel the same way you do, uh, that we need major investment in our libraries in the city. Next caller we have is Barbara B. Barbara B., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi, can you hear me, Mayor Duggan? Uh, loud and clear. My name is Barbara Bearfield. I live in the Palmer Woods area. I've lived in the Palmer Park area for most of my life. And these are some amazing ideas and what a great opportunity for the city of Detroit. I am calling to advocate for support of public spaces, of parks, okay. recreation centers. Um, I'm very involved with people for Palmer Park. And we know that during this period of time, this past year, parks have served an incredible um, service to our communities, um, opportunities for people to socialize and be healthy and mentally and physically healthy during the pandemic. So and Barbara, I think if, this if, is you, if you had one that was a lower priority, what would it be? Um, I would like to probably public safety. I think public safety is extremely important, but okay. I think with some of the other other investments, talking about uh, intergenerational poverty and neighborhood investments and digital divide, and keeping recreation and parks very very strong, a cultural facility strong, you're gonna that will be balanced right, off. You won't it. need right. quite as much um, public safety. And, and the homeowner preference. Belief, belief, belief. The, the homeowner preference. You vote for before fourteen, before sixteen, or no preference. Well, I would urge us to try to find the people that lost their homes because they couldn't afford the um, the taxes that were their, the over assessment of the taxes or couldn't afford their to keep their homes. So that would be my priority. But I would also ask, like to ask about digital divide. Will the parks be the recipients of Wi-Fi? Because I think that's an incredibly wonderful opportunity for the community to have access to Wi-Fi that's in their- That's something outdoor. we're gonna take a serious look at. So, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. thank you very much, right. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I know the park, Detroit Park Coalition would like to talk to you uh, at uh, more length about uh, our ideas you're, for you're, parks. You're gonna, get, you're gonna get lots of opportunities here, okay. Next caller we have is Cheek S. Cheek S, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Yes, hi. Good evening. Is my voice coming through? 
Uh, hello, sir. My name is Shay Sen. Um, my family is originally from the west side of Detroit, but we currently stay in Southfield. And um, I will say one thing in particular that I feel is that the city should definitely look into is being forerunners in the space of technology, specifically blockchain technologies and using the, um, the concept of blockchain technologies and using it in social constructs and both monetary and financial policies, giving the power back to the people of Detroit and setting up systems in place to help ensure it, that generational um that generational equity will be able to be to be here in 10 years so time, you, you want to be able to pay your taxes in bitcoin um no but there's uh, plenty of different uses for the uh, okay. for right. blockchain right. specified to uh, bitcoin sir but i believe um using that that blockchain technology in terms of education in terms of uh, financial resources in terms of even lending services for the people of detroit being forerunners putting the city of detroit in seconds. a position to be forerunner to be high tech uh, technologically okay. advanced would be a great uh, i believe a great all right advantage. thank you uh, i want to try as best i can to stick with detroiters we're going to go to 8 45 because we have so many people waiting so we're going to try to keep this to 60 seconds i'd ask you to please uh, this is a detroiters decision i asked to let the detroiters uh, get on and vote. Uh, who's next? Next caller we have is Janice D. H. Janice D. H., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Good evening, uh, Good Mr. Evening. Mayor. Thank you for this forum. And I uh, have several uh, likes or wants, and one of them is with regards to the options on who owned the home. Mm -hmm. I think that homeowners uh, from 2009 through 2016. Uh, okay. Per the Detroit News Analytics website, okay. the story that Christine McDonald right. uh, wrote last year, January of last year, Detroit homeowners overtaxed. I used that analytics website and my house was overtaxed $5,404. So I firmly believe that anyone who uh, All right, so you got to vote for 16. What else would you like to see as the priorities? Okay. Well, uh, as a part of that, as a footnote, I believe that the individuals who were paying the taxes, whether they lived in the property or not, should still receive the benefit of the programs or the tax credit, whatever's put in place. Uh, because I paid the taxes and I did not live in that house. Other relatives did, but I paid the taxes. So that's my belief. The other um, thing that I'd like to see is the replacement of old sewage lines and homeowners service lines that are cracked and so, causing right. sewage backups so, into our basements when it rains. So, and I'm so, in the aviation so, subdivision. Okay, so I'm, you may not have heard it at the beginning, but we have a water sewage source of funds that's outside of the American Rescue Plan. So that's okay. so we've got the potential to do that, but that'll be a different fund. Anything else on here that's a high priority to you? No, it's it's a, for me it's about that tax rate. I do believe okay. that the broadband should be available to all residents in the city of Detroit, particularly those who are uh, underemployed and lower income, such as what you uh, stated in um, the lower income residences, those communities should definitely receive broadband so that they can be fully connected. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Next caller we have is LG Stylo 6. LG Stylo 6, you may omit yourself, you have one minute. Next caller we have is Karen F. Karen F., you may admit yourself. You have one minute. Hello, how are you? Good evening. Tell us where you live. Good evening, Mayor. 48221. Well, I'm fortunate enough. I have just, two just tell me the neighborhood. You don't need to tell me the address. Yeah, 48221. Okay. And I would, like, I would just like to see something to do with just this, uh, more cameras, more something to monitor all of the speed rates and like you said all of the different crimes that are happening on the freeway something to do with just you know right. uh if we can't get the extra money for police which i know that's that might be a whole different thing but we definitely need more cameras everywhere um because we could capture more things and maybe it'll be a little more intimidating to the criminals i don't know and so if you had one thing on here that would be a lower priority for you, what would it be? Uh, oh, I 
I can't see this, the lower priority on our- Neighborhood, parks and rec, uh, reducing digital divides, small business, or fighting intergenerational poverty. Wow. I know it's hard being Those in are government. Some good ones. Yeah. I, I hate to say this. Um, you said the lowest priority? Yep. That would have to be, you know, with the parks and rec, we have things now that people don't utilize. Okay. You know, That's just right. unfortunately, I... you know, when I was a kid, we used the parks and recs. We got stuff and people don't use swings when, right. when they put new swings out. So that. All I'm, right. Now, this I'm is why we're asking. I'm not. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested. And and if you yeah, think homeowners should I get. Did. Do you, do you think homeowners should get preference? And if they do, the people here before 2014 or the people here before 2016? Why is there a difference in the 14 and 16? Okay, if you missed it, you don't need to, to worry about it then. You probably missed the beginning. Uh, anything okay. else? you have any good idea uh, that you've been thinking about for years uh, that you always wanted to tell the mayor this is what we ought to do? And that's something when you get an opportunity, you go blank, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, that's think, okay. We'll have more of these. You can call back. All well, right. let me end this by saying I thank you for the forum because okay. you know what? If you don't call in and try to give some input, then you can't complain. Uh, no, thank this you, is Mary. helpful. Thank you very much. I just want to know. I'm just asking everybody, honestly, you shouldn't feel bad about your votes. Just tell us honestly how you feel. That's how we have a conversation in the community. I would not have predicted uh, this would be uh, coming out this way, which is pretty interesting. Uh, who's next? Next caller we have is Community Community Development Advocates of Detroit. Okay, there's probably a person on there, but go ahead. You may admit yourself, you have one minute. Next caller we have is R. Stewart. R. Stewart, you may admit yourself, you have one minute. Next caller, Amy. Oh, I'm unmuting. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Uh, I'm Rochella Stewart. And I'm in District 7, 482, uh, 48204 okay. uh, zip code. Uh, I think we talked last week, Mayor, but I want to talk on transportation. Uh, we need a lot of upgrades in transportation, infrastructure, okay. emphasis on uh, routes that's been left behind. Okay. So, uh, so I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to cut this short. But I mean, talk at the beginning. I pointed out we've got sixty to one hundred fifty million dollars in transit money coming from a different bucket. So we're not. We've got okay. funds for transit. My question is, out of these priorities, what's your highest? My highest priority is on grants for low-income people to be able to fix up their homes in the okay. city of Detroit. All right. A uh, long time Detroiters have stuck through you through good times and bad, okay. and we've been here. No, so we done fought the fights with Detroit, and I, I think you. we deserve to have I, I, grants to fix up our house. I, you told me last week that it was five million dollars in for right, grants. Right. It should be well more than five million dollars. This, this, this in is for well. This is this is what I'm saying. This is your chance. Uh, which um, of these is your lowest priority on this list? All the priorities you have on my list is high. Oh, yeah, but you can't, okay, you can't uh, spend more money on something without taking it from somewhere. You've got to pick a last place finisher. <laughs> okay, if I had to pick, oh, my goodness. Well, we, put you, we just put your vote uh, in for the home repairs. So you got to take something away. Okay, I think parks, recreation for kids, it's, it's not enough things for these kids to do in the city. Well, you don't, um, don't want to cut that, then. You, no, I don't want to cut. Um, oh, God, you have so many good things there. I really don't know, even want to say. But this is, this is why it's hard choice. to be mayor, but you got to make decisions. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you, what's the lowest? What is, they're all great. What is the one that's the least great out of those the six? The lowest is, okay, probably the lowest is uh, police. Okay, public safety. And if you public had safety, a choice uh, on, do you think homeowners should get preference on these programs? And if you do, people who are here before 2014 or people who are here before 2016? You want me to tell you the honest for God truth? Yes. I know between those times, a lot of people got tax breaks, they got homes at low prices, they got grants, they got special things. If you ain't a Detroit that have been here for over 10 to 15 years before we got into okay. so you, recessions and stuff. Uh, you vote for 2014. 
I got you. That's oh, that, this. I, I love this. I just want you to tell me what's in your heart, and you definitely are. You know, because so thank you. With the influx of people coming in, we didn't had higher taxes on people. Well, they've right. been here for so long, right. and they infiltrated into the new center. Yeah, we don't, we, downtown, we don't, we don't use the term infiltrated. There. Everybody's welcome, but I hear uh, your well, point. Well, I'm just. Yeah, yeah, but I, I hear your point, uh, and and the argument that those who were here first ought to get priority on fixing up their homes. Those who stayed should get consideration. I think it's a pretty powerful point. I think it's coming through very strong tonight. All right, who's next? Next caller we have is Amy K. Amy K, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi, good evening. Um, again, my name is Amy Karath, and I live in Green Acres. I am interested in seeing more funding going to food, um, food assistance and food security for people in the city of Detroit. For example, more funding for gardeners to have access to land more funding for grocery stores to be able to do facade improvements and offset the higher costs of living in the city of Detroit. Um, also a way to get urban gardeners and farmers water and also transportation for, um, food, for meals on wheels and for food to get to students in school during the summer months, during the, the um, summer meals that the city provides, that those are actually de delivered directly to children who might have some problems getting to a site. Those are great priorities out of all of the ones up here. What would be your lowest priority? Uh, I would say uh, street streetscape improvements. We recently went through that in Livernois and it looks yeah. absolutely beautiful, but I don't know that. Okay, um, so that's the neighborhood everywhere in the city. Was that yeah. Okay, that's our first no. And, and so uh, on homeowner uh, preferences, if you think homeowners should get preference on all these programs, do you think it should be people here before 14, people here before 16, or no preference? Um, I have lived here since 1982 and have been a homeowner since 2002, so I would say push it as far back as possible. <laughs> okay, uh, you're honest. 2014 for sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, great call. <laughs> thank you very much. Who's next? Next caller we have is Zoom user. Zoom user, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hello. Good evening. Hi, this is Carter. I'm, I'm in the Osborne community. I will say number two would be my first preference and number six will be the second. And also um, the preference will be 2014 and be prior to. And how, how can I ensure that I can work on a committee or make sure that this gets um, executed? Uh, well, you are about the most efficient caller of the night. So I want you signed up. Tell me of all the neighborhood <laughs> investment stuff, what would you like to see most off of that list? What's the most important thing to you? So number number two will be the the my number one, restore the neighborhoods. But what, what about it? What, what number, one thing in the neighborhoods would you say you want the most? Well, I used to be a block club president, but since it's a lot of older people, but a, a lot of newer, younger people, vibrant folks is coming into the community. So I can kind of restore the property as far, but the elderly too, that's here as, yeah. as far as roof repairs, refreshing the neighborhoods, the grass service. We do need lighting too. I know that's irrelevant to what you're asking, yeah. but we do need a little bit more lighting on our block. And then number two would be, I mean, number six would be my second preference because I'm trying to be a small business owner in the, uh -huh. in the community. Not the, not, okay. I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but not so much as the established uh, established businesses that's in a community that's not giving back. I, I hear you. So I would like you to want make the a folks who there. have been here to get the uh, to get their fair turn. That's what you want. Right. Uh, and Correct. So I'm Correct. I'm with you on that. Do you know Kayana Sessions, your district manager? No, I do not. We got to find a way. Yes. I'm not sure how we do this, but if you look up Kayana's phone number on our website, she's your district mm -hmm. manager. I'd love to see you engaged mm -hmm. in the planning because just the way you talk and think about this. Uh, we, we need to have mm -hmm. you engaged. This is terrific. So if you'll find her on the website Absolutely. and call her and tell her that you're signed up uh, for the planning. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you very much. All next, right. Who's next? Next caller we have is Megan O. Megan O, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi. Thank you so much for doing these. Um, I live in the Bagley neighborhood. And I really love a lot of the ideas you have, have here, especially the intergenerational poverty ideas. That's definitely what this needs to take on, especially the wraparound services. Could we really make a difference in people's lives by giving a couple of years of really 
strong supports, the home repairs. I do want to say in terms of what I don't want to pay for, I don't like the idea of putting money into more parking in the business districts. I'd really like to okay. see that money going into in expanded public transit options. Let's give people more choices for how to get in and out of these districts, not just more parking. Um, and if I had to um, decrease funding on other areas, um, I, yeah, less on public yeah. safety. Uh, I think if we deal with some of the other intergenerational poverty. And then I think the um, some of the digital divide stuff is good, but I'm not sure about things like handing out computers to seniors. I, I love the idea of having them in the libraries though. So picking and okay. choosing within, right. I guess. No, no, this is good. And this is really, this is really helpful because I just threw out a lot of things and the final plan will look different. Last thing, do you think homeowners should get a preference on these programs? And if so, those who were here before 2014 and those who were here before 2016? Um, I'm newer, but I, you definitely make a good case for the 200, 2014 preference. Uh, people who got hit hard by the uh, recession definitely need the greatest okay. help and support. All right. Well, thank you. Your neighborhood's doing great right now. It sounds like you're going to be a big part of it. All right. Next caller we have is Sandra W. Sandra W., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi, Mr. Mayor. My name is Sandra Walker. I live in District 2. Okay. Um, I like the parks and rec. One thing I noticed with my kids is a complete lack of um, arts, places to go do art, mm -hmm. uh, do plays, places to, my daughter wants to be a filmmaker, so oh, access to, to anything, there was, there was just nothing for them. I always had to take them away from the city uh, for their activities. So within that parks and rec, I would like some emphasis on an outlet, a place where people can learn Kids right. can learn um, music and any other kind of art that they, that they want to learn and perform. So B Big Sean's got a program over at the Boys and Girls Club down uh, 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 down near Joy Road, but that's a little bit away from you. Um, and so of all these priorities, which would be your lowest? I, I would probably take away from the small business assistance if I had to pick okay. one. And do you think homeowners should get preference on these programs? And if you do, homeowners before 14 or homeowners before 16? Yes, and before 14. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Who's next? Next caller we have is Brandon. Brandon, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hey, Mr. Mayor. How you doing? Good evening. Tell us where you live. I live in Six Mile and Hubble area. Okay. Um, I went to high school all over of you there. Had, you went to high school over there. Oh, okay, well, it was Catholic Central at the time. Oh, boo -hoo. I went to U of D. Sorry, okay. sir. <laughs> We're off to a bad start right out of the gate. Sorry, I got a sir. cubby on the phone. All right, go ahead. Sorry, sir. <laughs> but uh, I love all of your ideas. I love all of your ideas. The one thing I think I would want to add is a marketing campaign. Um, because all of your ideas, this money runs out in 2024. Right. At the end of the day, Detroit is a city built for 1.5 to 2 million people. And right now we have between 600 and 700,000. We need to find a way to retain what we have and compete with New York and Chicago and other places to try to bring people in. So if you can pull money from not necessarily one specific thing, but all of the things, just a little bit, to create some sort of marketing campaign to really try to build the city and create pride in the city, I think it would be beneficial. So, so I'm laughing because when I was on the phone call of the White House today, Mayor Eric Garcetti of Los Angeles asked them if we could use the American Rescue Plan money for marketing, almost word for word what you just said, uh, and they said no to us. Uh, but I'm fascinated no. that you and the mayor of Los Angeles uh, have the same strategy. Yeah. So well, I think we need to, I like your idea. We just have to find a different source of money. We can't use American Rescue Plan money. Uh, aside from that, though, and it's a terrific idea, what else? Which of these do you think is the most important thing for us to do in your neighborhood? The most important thing is, in my opinion, is public safety. Okay. Um, public safety, I think, creates, you know, everything that comes on this list. If you, if you solve public safety, you reduce the violence, everything comes from there. And, and of these opinion. six, what would be your lowest priority? Lowest priority, 
Unfortunately, I would have to probably say reducing the digital divide. Okay. Because like I said, if you can create play if you do if you solve everything else, I mean the, the social the digital divide, it all comes with it. Everything comes up if you if you focus on public safety. Okay, and do you think homeowners should get preferences on these services? And if they do, homeowners be here before 14 or homeowners here up till 16? I really, I feel like I don't have enough information about okay. that entire okay. situation. No, if no, I had no to problem. choose one, I would, no, no, say, no problem. I would say 2014. Okay. Uh, all right, anything else? One other thing, if I could do one thing for you in your neighborhood right now to make your life better, what would it be? Uh, speed humps everywhere. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, thank you very right. much for the call. Next caller we have is John M. John M., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Good evening. Good evening. I'm from Jefferson Chalmers. Okay. So I really like your uh, education proposal. And I would like to see it expanded beyond just cutting grass. I'd like to see it expanded to the architects and the landscape architects and all that are doing all these designs for our parks down here in Jefferson Chalmers. I love that idea. And expand it to the block clubs. I really like how you have engaged the block clubs with a kind of a carrot to clean up the alleys, but I think we should empower them even more and I really want to look at how we can empower the block clubs to take on non-residential landowners that speculators, whatever you want to call them, that aren't part of the community, but they're taking down the community. Okay. Uh, first, lead so, abatement. Right, hang on one second. Now, you, you voted for intergenerational poverty and neighborhood investment, which is good. What You got to take something away, though. What's your lowest priority on this list? Oh, I haven't even told. Uh, parks is the number one thing. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to take. Okay, this is this state. is this is how the city got into deficit, right? Uh, so tell me what you got to take away from. Public safety. Public safety. All right. Uh, uh, and if if you do, you think homeowners should get a preference on these services, and if so, ones who were here before fourteen, or ones who were here through sixteen. I really, I don't understand. The you don't need, you don't need to vote. That's okay. All right, we're gonna, you guys, you guys have got a lot going on down there, and uh, uh, we're gonna get you a rec center uh, pretty soon too. Uh, so thank you very much for the call. Next caller we have is Terrence M H. Terrence M H. You may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Uh, good evening, uh, good evening. Uh, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good. Uh, District Seven. Um, you know, with the advent of technology and things move so rapidly in that space that a lot of residents, especially people of color, feel like they don't have the acumen or they are not part of the media mainstream. So they don't get the information first, they get it last. And so with that being the case, the digital divide comes first in my mind okay. uh, to make sure everybody has access. The second thing is that um, that excited me is that uh, as far as going back to the advent of technology, uh, positions or jobs that are through apprenticeships and that they have wraparound programs to kind of see them through. And once they get these positions as a technician or otherwise, then they're solid and you don't have as many problems as long as people are earning a good living. And so those are my statements on that. Okay, and well, now wait, you got to you gotta pick you, something that's a lower priority now. Ah, man, it was a lot to digest. Um, but I, I guess maybe if you bent my arm behind my back, I guess I would say uh, Parks and Rec. Okay. And, and do you have and an opinion on whether homeowners should get preferences? And if, uh, if they do, people here before 14 or people here before 16? Oh, absolutely, 14. They were hit first and hardest, so okay. definitely 14. All right. Tell me if I could do one thing in your neighborhood right now to make your life better, what would it be? Digital fixing the digital divide, yeah. making okay. sure I don't you, necessarily. You totally uh, understand this. tablets and computers. Yeah. You totally yeah, understand yeah, but that. Definitely digital divide. And, and this, is, this has been so interesting. I would have thought intergenerational poverty would have been higher as this is going, but you wonder if, if this caller's point isn't the right one. The folks who are suffering the most poverty are probably not on their Zoom right now uh, watching this. 
uh, and, and it really does make the point about the digital divide. So thank you very much for the, the call. All right, so John Roach tells me there's 100 people waiting, so I'm going to try if I can stand to go till 9 o'clock if you guys want to hang with us. This is just fascinating. So let's keep going as long as people want to. Go ahead. Next caller we have is Yvonne J. Yvonne J., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi. I would like to start with what I was cut. Okay, tell me in what neighborhood you live in. Oh, I live on the north end. Okay. And I, and, and I wanted to piggyback on what your statement was, that I was thinking the same thing, that this uh, forum is under a representation of low-income residents. Yes, it is. So we're, you know, that's a problem right there. Right. Uh, I would cut public safety. Okay. And I would cut the funds going to the small business support for right now. Okay. And I think that there should be money in housing. I think that uh, for low income people in a, in a generational poverty, that some of those land bank homes should be fixed up and given to those folks, you know, some kind of way. I think mental health issues is a huge problem. It's a, a stumbling block for a lot of people in Detroit that are suffering with issues, and we need to come up with a very comprehensive mental health program to deal with these issues. I think the moratorium on the water shutoffs should be extended, and I think we should come up with an affordable water plan because people, you know, we have a high percentage of poverty. I know that yeah, you are I aware think, of that. I think, I think we're, we're, we're going to be good on the water moratorium. Uh, do you think homeowners who have been here should get a preference? And if so, think, those before 14 that, or those before 16? I think, I think that the people who lost their home because of uh, over assessments of tax, taxation should be given preference. We should figure out some kind of way. I know there was a little relief, but it wasn't enough. So I think that those are the folks should be given the first preference. Okay. Is to try to get them back in the homes, and I think we could do it with some of these land bank homes and fix them up and help folks out. Okay. Thank you so very I would much. So I'll add a third option to the list. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Next caller we have is Chuck. Chuck, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute to ask a question. Hi, my name is Chuck. Uh, I'm on the. Uh, the state uh, state fair area, just south of the new uh, Amazon place. Okay. And uh, you know, the one thing I think that the one thing that'd be useful for, for me, I live in a block where there's literally 40 empty lots. I'm, I've been in it's, it. It's, I know. Yeah. It's, it's been like the local trash thing on this block, right? Right. And I, I obviously this is a high priority, but it's. I mean, I'm super motivated. You know, what can I do to you know, I partner with the police to give them to you know, pre-process information for them to to do something. So right. you may put up you know like security cameras on the street. We, I mean, no we, one's here except me. And except I'm just being annoyed because people are dropping stuff off you know in the side streets. You know. We, we definitely but, I mean, we definitely can put uh, discrete cameras up. Uh, so you've got a lot of land to work with there. So uh, other than public safety, what would be your other highest priority there? Uh. 900 Annan Street, give me a safety course on a, on a bulldozer, and I'll bulldoze it myself. Okay, so neighborhood investment. What's the lowest priority on this list? Small business assistance. Okay, uh, and do you have an opinion as to whether homeowners should get preference on these programs? And if so, those who were here before 14 or those who were here before 16? No preference. Okay. Great. All right. Well, we got a little park coming to your neighborhood soon, too, and uh, I'm excited about that. So you know what we're doing there, right? Do we mute him? No, I, oh. I haven't figured out what's going on. I, oh. I, I don't know where to, where to get, where oh. the, get that feed of that. Okay. So, uh, so we're building uh, a park uh, just south of State Fair as part of your neighborhoods. We, were you there when I had the neighborhood meeting in the backyard? No, I, I don't know where the where the meetings are. I'm oh, you going, must be farther uh, I down. I want to be more connected, but I'm not sure how to get. Okay. I'm not sure how to get uh, act knowing when these notices are going out. Yeah. Okay. You're probably a little bit further away, uh, but we should get you hooked up with the block club down there because they're getting really strong. Uh, we're putting a neighborhood 
Uh, we're putting a park in south of the state fairgrounds. We're also putting another park in east of the state fairgrounds that the neighbors are designing. And we did that as part of the Amazon process. So that a lot of the neighbors were really engaged. Uh, you, you, you sound like you're a little bit away from your dearest neighbor. But we're going to see if we can't do something about that dumping. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would like to be hooked up with, with that because I've been, you know, I've been paying for to get those ma those ma overhead lights in my uh, backyard yeah. because otherwise it's too dark out here, you know, for neighborhood safety. So I mean, yeah. I really want to want to be more connected, but I'm not sure how to gotcha. where where is all these organizations are or how to get connected. Yeah. So the easiest way is uh, that you would be in District Two. I think you're just that, in that side of the border. But if you were. Uh, to go on the city website and look up Kim Tandy's phone number, your district manager, she will be glad to uh, set you up with that whole group. So Kim Tandy is your key. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Next caller we have is Henry C. Henry C., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Yes, how y'all doing today? Good evening. Hey, um, I was actually um, calling about um, assistance for parents due to the COVID and being forced to go back to work. I know the children are getting out of school for the year, but going into the next year, um, it may still be where they have to be at home. So what kind of assistance can we give us parents for that? So I, I guess I'm not following it. Have you been vaccinated? Uh, no, I haven't been vaccinated. Okay, I, I, I can't help you. <laughs> you know, you got to make some good choices. I, I'm, I, you know, I have a hard time uh, with, uh, with this. But if people are coming back to City Hall very shortly, and those who are vaccinated will be working without masks, and those who are, aren't vaccinated will be working with masks, and people are making choices, and I, it's a hard situation. Go ahead. Next caller we have is Jeffrey N. Jeffrey N., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, my name is Jeffrey Nolish. I live in the Cass Corridor in District 6. I appreciate your taking the time uh, tonight. I'll try and be brief so other people can, can get a uh, word in. Ultimately, Mr. Mayor, to address the negative impacts of COVID-19 and rebuild a stronger, more equitable economy and address the systemic economic challenges of low-income communities and people of color, I believe you absolutely have to invest in people with, dis with disabilities. And I think I appreciate the six buckets you've laid out. I think you need. I think you need to take a million dollars at each one of those to create a seventh. That's for a great idea. Good for you. Uh, we'll take a look well, at it. That's why we do these meetings. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, we'll, I, I appreciate. We'll, just go ahead. What else? That's a sorry, that's sir. a really important priority that hadn't hit our radar. What else should we be doing? What What else have we missed? I, I would just ask you. I appreciate the I appreciate the funding uh, for each one of these buckets, but I'd also ask you to do. Uh, more analysis in terms of improve, improving public safety, especially when it pertains to people with disabilities in that, uh, you know, 50% of people killed by the police are people with disabilities. And we really appreciate you reevaluating the training and making sure people with disabilities uh, have, have centric training to, to the force. So, so I think, I'll, I think I'll, you are going to love Chief uh, James White, uh, who um, went back and got his uh, master's in his uh, is literally a licensed mental health therapist. And the whole point is to try to make the Detroit Police Department see each individual as a person. And a lot of folks have different needs. Uh, and uh, I think you're going to love the kind of leadership uh, that he provides because I think he's going to be very sensitive uh, to, uh, to your issues. So thank you. Uh, it's a great, thank uh, you. a great call. Do you have a preference on the, uh, the homeowners? Uh, yes, sir. My preference is I have to talk to my community and I'll get back to you. Okay, that's all right. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, that's a great, great suggestion. Uh, who's next? Next caller we have is Luella P. Luella P., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi there. Good evening. Can you hear me? I can. Tell us what neighborhood you live in. Fantastic. I live in Brightmore, uh -huh. and I wanted to put in uh, some context in the question of 2014 and 2016 to make sure that people know that currently the lowest value homes are still over assessed. And so I don't think it's an all or nothing question of where should it be. It should be the people who are who have suffered the most and the lowest income people 
have certainly suffered the most. Okay, so of the priorities here, hopefully we are targeting them to lower income people. Which of these priorities do you see as the most important? Um, digital d divide is super important to me. I have kids in the neighborhood who come to my house to do their homework. Really? And you and give them, the, and they, they use your Wi Fi? Yeah, they use my Wi Fi and they use my computer. Good for you. Um, well, and how, how fast do they catch on once they start using it? Are you kidding? I have the smartest kids in the okay. world here. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> you're, you're odd TVs, but I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> uh, so, okay, we have extremely smart young people. I got you. Go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. the, the problem is that they have had very Im impassioned teachers without the resources, and they have parents who don't have the resources, and they can't all count on Miss Luella. We yeah. have to have an infrastructure in this city that doesn't count on Miss Luella. So this is why I'm doing this is you are explaining to a lot of folks who don't know what digital divide means. You've just done a beautiful job explaining why it is so important. So uh, these young people with all this talent have to go down to your house uh, just to get connected. If we were in the suburbs, they're going home to their own houses and have access uh, day and night. And it is absolutely contributing to inequality in this country. Uh, so, okay, you, you, you love digital divide. Wait, wait. Which of these things would you put lowest on your list? I'm sorry, I'm not gonna answer your question. I want to say that it is imperative. People, even the self-serving people need to understand that if the kids who don't have access to adequate education and access right now have that, we would have a cure to cancer. So just look at it from your own self-interest and understand that that's important. And then my other piece is that I have an alternative income stream, which is that the land bank and the city of Detroit have to pay for their own blight tickets. Me and my neighbors make up for the- 15 so um, I understand. I understand. If they pay for their own blight tickets, you pay for their own blight tickets because their money comes from no, the taxpayers. We, we, no, we prevent but, the blight tickets, but it's right. like, but, you but know, the, time. the, land, the land banks, lady. understand the land bank's money comes from the Detroit taxpayers. So saying they pay for the blight tickets just means that you pay for uh, the blight ticket. So it sounds good, but it just comes out of your pocket. All right, who's next? Next caller we have is Carl N. Carl, and you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Carl, are you with Good us? Good evening, Mayor. Yes, I'm here. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. My name is Carlos Nierbach, and I'm in the Eastern Market area. Okay. And my interest is in retaining the greatness that Detroit once had when it was the Paris of the Midwest. And that is reinstating those beautiful skill trades that made the city so great. And I wonder if you are able to receive uh, my proposal for the campus that I'm proposing. I, I, don't, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know about your proposal. Right now we're doing budgets. So are you saying the intergenerational poverty priority uh, for uh, for that kind of training would be your priority. Absolutely. Okay. My and which which of these lists which of these items would be the lowest on your list? Uh, the all important and uh, but I must say public safety. Okay. And do you have an opinion on the uh, homeowner preferences? Uh, yes, I I definitely advocate for all the people that was here before the bankruptcy. Okay. So it, it's 14. Uh, 2014. All right. Thank you very much. Next caller we have is Joyce Carlton S. Joyce Carlton S., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing? G good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I was um, told that uh, he was trying to figure out where you want to put the money as far as um, alternative plans. So what, what would be your highest priority? Well, I mean, first of all, when you, when you 
talking about the COVID money, you got, um, you know, all these other states that are putting up, uh, you know, $5 million yeah. to, uh, you know, right. increase the participation. Right. And, and my, my thing is that uh, as, as opposed to putting up and letting one person get $1 million, why can't we propose to have, like, say, 20 people with... Yeah. 50,000, okay. 100 people so, with 10, uh, that's, that, that, that's the governor's area. Do you have an opinion on the American Rescue Plan money for the city? Do I have an opinion on it? D did you see the whole presentation? Well, I mean, no, I didn't. Okay. Uh, so I w well, I, we're going to have 25 more of these, but if you would catch one of them and then uh, call up and let us know of the priorities that's under the American Rescue Plan funds, which one you'd like to see us prioritize? All right, right. Uh, that's, that's fair. I, okay. I, I apologize for taking up no, your no, time. No, no, it's all right. You, your, your idea, the governor needs to hear your idea because I think she's considering that right now. Uh, but that's right. not this call. But you may, you may be happy with what she does, but I, that's, that's her announcement. Go ahead. Next caller we have is Joan R. Joan R., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hello. Um, Good evening. Thank you this this is uh, an amazing array of choices so i can't really speak specifically to a lot of it other than to say um, i'll speak about the digital divide and i'm president of the optimist neighborhood association which is hoover to outer drive um six mile to state fair so mm -hmm. we're northeast Detroit. um we have a huge problem with digital divide in the neighborhood i'll talk about the seniors which no one's really been talking about right we've lost about since we went to zoom for our meetings we've lost two-thirds of um, our neighbors participating because of their inability right. to deal with the technology um i have neighbors that are looking to see if they could afford another 30 dollars on their cell phone bill to have connectivity so that they might be able to do online banking and coming to the decision that they can't afford that so anything that can be seconds. done to bring us literally into the 21st century and help um, the underserved neighborhoods out would be a benefit. You're, you're making a great case. Which of these six is your lowest priority? I would say the Small Business Administration because I know there's been funding elsewhere for it. And do you have an opinion on whether homeowners should get a preference? I do. I would suggest that it go, I would like to see people who have been, um, who have lost their homes be helped, but also I would suggest that people from 2014 and forward only be part of the home repair programs because again the renters and are, are the most underserved in our area and the, have the least amount of money so to to not give them full benefit to some of these trainings and the intergenerational poverty i think is a disservice all right thank you very much all right who's next next caller we have is kenya s kenya s you may unmute yourself you have one minute Hi, um, I, my name is Kenya. I live in the Six Mile and Hubble area, right near Renaissance High School. Right. I really like that you put out about um, cracking down on the guys feeding and doing donuts because I live right on that intersection. There's an accident there every day. It's ridiculous. Put as much money as you can towards that, up, up that amount and take those cars <laughs> or whatever. Uh, secondly, I think that <coughs> homeowners have low income but are not, you know, super rich should also be able to cash in on this um, money to improve the homes. Okay, so, so you want more on public safety, more on neighborhood investment. What would you take yeah. away from? I would take away from small business assistance. Okay. And I would put a preference towards the 2016. Um, 2016. Preference. Okay. All right, if I could do one thing for your neighborhood today besides getting rid of the drifters, what would it be? Littering. Literally, this place, I, boy, I'm with you on that. Or tickets or something. Right. So we, uh, uh, one of the things that is in the fighting the intergenerational poverty we talked about is doubling the number of the DPW crews that are out cleaning up illegal dump sites and uh, uh, the littering and the like. I want to double the number who are out there uh, because I agree with you. Uh, we, the, our children should not be raised uh, looking at this kind of uh, uh, these kinds of conditions. So thank you very much for the call. Next caller we have is G. A. Irvin. G. A. Irvin, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Uh, 
I'm the president of the uh, Harriet Tubman, Fred, Frederick Douglass, Goldberg Black Club. Uh huh. I don't see how you're uh, separating in a generational from uh, the digital divide. They're the same to me. There's certainly a big part of it. Yeah, and so I, uh, that's my priority. That's the priority. Okay. And now you got experience with the medical profession. I think that uh, you should combine the medical profession to, to have some mentors. So we have yep. one round of medical professionals, as well as with the uh, lighting department, have the youth become mentors to some of the skilled tradesmen in the lighting department and connect the, uh, the apprenticeship program with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers uh, with, the, with the youth. That, so that that's, that's, the, the, that's the intergenerational poverty program. That's what we're proposing on the Learn to Earn program is exactly like that. That's what I'm interested in. Okay. But hang on, you can't get off that quick. Uh, what do you want to reduce? Because you're going to have to make a decision. What's Public your lowest safety. priority? Public safety. Public safety, all right. Uh, and uh, do you have uh, an opinion on the, on the homeowner preferences? 2016. 2016. 2016. Okay. okay, good. All right, thank you very much. Next caller we have is number ending with 005. 005, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hello. How are you? Hello. Good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Tell us what neighborhood you live in. Uh, I live in the Jury Road Evergreen area. Okay. What I'm uh, interested in is the neighborhood investment. Mm -hmm. That's the most important to me. Uh, with these grants for homeowners mm -hmm. and that uh, they have that income guidelines and I never qualify for anything. Yeah. But I've been in my house 38 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, when <laughs> when will uh, me being a senior citizen have an opportunity to get if, some of these grants. If we had a roof repair, repair, if we had a roof repair program, I, would it help you? I uh, just paid for my own roof. OK. All right, so. <laughs> so that wouldn't help me. All right, what all right. I need is some concrete work, some tree removal, those kinds of things. That's I what you. I need in, in, in my area. OK. But um, that's my uh, main concern is the neighborhood investment. Okay. Second is public safety. Yeah. Because you can't go to the park without, you, you, you see what I'm saying? I sure do. You, you know, without it being safe. I know. So, uh, Parks would be my lowest priority okay. on this list. All right. I've, I've written down some of everything. And I uh, would be one of the, uh, would like the preference for Detroit homeowners uh, from 2009 to 2014. Okay. All right. That's, well, thank you that's very, what I would like. Thank you very much. You're, you're really clear on your priorities. Uh, let me ask you the same question. If I could do one thing mm -hmm. in your neighborhood right now to make your life better, what would it be? Well, you, you, I heard that you said that the uh, Detroit Water and Sewage Department, that's a different set of funding. Right. Uh, but what would happen, uh, would make me feel real good, is that these, uh, when, this, when it rains out here, the street floods and the water goes in my basement. That's been going on for years. I've had all kinds of problems with that. I've paid plumbers. I've uh, right. made all kind of complaints with the water and sewage department. Do we have any and I know way of getting, getting of her funding. contact information? You sure can get my contact Hang information. Hang on, I don't want you to give it out over the air. I, <laughs> okay. What's that? Hang on. Oh, we got your phone number. Gary Brown is sitting here, and he is going to call you tomorrow. He is a great mm -hmm. uh, manager of the water and sewer department. He's going to make you happy. All right? So you'll, hear from, you'll hear from him tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. All right. Who's next? All right. Next caller we have is Bernadette A. Bernadette A. You may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi, Mayor Duggan. This is Professor Bernadette Atuahana. Good, good evening to you. Okay. Where do you so live? This, I live in uh, on the east side of Detroit on Van Dyke and Jefferson near okay. the UAW building. I'm working out, so okay. excuse me that I'm out of breath. So. I just want to say these choices you are giving people are just so deeply pro problematic for the following reasons. Number one, you're asking people if they want, if people who are overtaxed should get priority in existing programs. 
I'm part of the Coalition for Property Tax Justice, and our request is that not that property tax victims be put ahead of the line in front of other folks, because in Detroit, we have all kinds of victims of dispossession, redlining, predatory lending, urban renewal, blockbusting. So it's not fair to put property tax victims ahead of any seconds. line. What seconds. we're asking you to do is create a separate stream of funding and put property tax victims ahead of that funding. So your question about priority, giving people priority is the wrong question. The same thing about your question about this choice between 2014 and 2016. Time. And so I have to deal with reality as it is. And reality as it is is that we're going to have $426 million from the federal government, and they write the rules on how we spend it. Uh, and you may not like the choices, but we're making the choices within uh, the parameters of the federal program. And, uh, and, and so if you want to go to Washington and lobby on the funding, that's fine. But as a city, we are going to honor the federal rules as they are. We're going to make decisions. It's a hard thing to make decisions within the dollars. I, I'm going to come back in my next life as a politician that promises everybody everything. Uh, but, of course, that's how the city got into bankruptcy in the first place. Uh, we are going to make choices, and that's why I'm asking each caller who gives us a priority to say, okay, but something has to drop off, and, and we have to make these choices as a community. And people have been wonderful tonight at really thoughtfully thinking through What's my highest priority, and what am I willing to give up? All right, who's next? Next caller is A1 People Choice. A1 People's Choice. You may omit yourself. You have one minute. Oh, great. I didn't think I was going to get on. Good Hi, evening. my name is Gina Peoples. Good evening, uh, Mayor. I live in a uh, long, old, lost neighborhood, just forgotten, between um, Linwood, Dexter, Davidson, Joy Road. Yeah. Um, you're you're I, not going to be forgotten for long. We're going to pay a lot of attention to you, but go ahead. I hope so. Uh, we've been in the neighborhood over 60 years, and I am so appalled. I grew up over here as a little girl, remember the good times, and now all I see is dilapidation. Uh, I live next door to a boarded up home. I pay to cut the grass of these boarded up homes. Um, uh, we have uh, People have bought so, some of these so homes. What, what, would be your, what would be your highest priority here? My highest priority over here is to take care of these dilapidated homes, tear them down, let us get the properties. Uh, uh, okay. It's all in one, it's not just one. And the people that have bought these homes don't live here and we are cutting the grass and keeping them clean. We don't even know where these people are. I know. And we have a, a, we have a vacant section on Boston between Lawton and Wildermere. There's, everything is torn down over there. Can the community get that, that, that lot? Can we you, do anything is, with that? So this, I, don't know if, I, I don't know if you were on from the beginning, but one of the things that we're proposing is that the neighbors could get that lot and could get grants to create parklets or gardens and the like and activate it. Is that something you'd be interested in? Yes, because I've been looking online and, and they always say there's nothing available. Over here. And when, okay. one other thing about the seniors, I, I, I have a mother, we got people on our street that's 90 something years old plus. Some of them have uh, did um, reverse mortgages on their home because they couldn't afford to stay there. So now they want to get their homes back, and they can't get them back because they're like $100,000 in this neighborhood to get it back. Is there anything you can do about that as well? I'm, I'm not sure about the, reverse, about the reverse mortgage uh, side, uh, but there are different things that we can help on. Of all of these priorities, which would be your lowest priority? The street, streetscapes. Okay, so that's, the, uh, that's another side of the neighborhood investment. So I guess you got one green and one red on the neighborhood. And do you have an opinion? Uh, on whether homeowners who have been here should get a preference, and if so, those before 2014 or those before 2016? For sure, those who go all the way back from 14. I really can't see a sign, but you got on the screen, it's so small. Yeah. But I would say 14 going back, those who have been here a long time right. and lost their homes, they should be brought home. I, I, think and, uh, also, oh, 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 I want you to hang in there. Right I love your neighborhood. In the next four or five years, you are going to see real progress there. I, I hope you'll hang in there because you've been through uh, really the bottom. But we're going to be paying we a lot have. of attention over there. Okay. Well, you know what? If you need, I want to be on your team too. But one okay. more thing, Mayor, before you go. I, my house is 100 years old. And I turn on the water, rust comes out. Okay. So they said we got the best water in the city. However, these old houses got old pipes right. that need to be replaced. Right. And we cannot afford to replace them. Right. So if you can take a million okay. from somewhere else and put okay. a and put a million or so over there and replace these hundred year old homes and replace these pipes so we can have safe drinking water. So Gary Brown, I, I think he could do his own one of these sessions, but we have a whole different set of water funding and one of the things we are doing 
is for folks who can't afford it going in and fixing the pipes for exactly uh, the reason that you say. And so I, at the beginning, I talked about the fact the, the bill in Washington has gone through the Senate. It's over to the House that will provide significant resources for the water and sewer department. So that's not this particular bill, but we're going to be back in the future to talk about that, and I think we're going to be able to help you on that. So hang in there. It's, it's going to get better in your neighborhood. So thank you. Next caller we have is Justin. Justin, you'll be able to mute yourself. You have one minute. Hey, thank you for your time today, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Uh, my name is Justin White. I live in Lafayette Park. Um, I, I vote to prioritize the reduction of the digital divide. Um, I think we, we could deprioritize some of the small business spend since we're generating, um, I think, arguably equivalent opportunities in the intergenerational poverty and digital divide categories. And I think that the, the you know, digital literacy is the future and reducing is one of the fastest ways to change outcomes for our kids, right? So, and, and do you have an opinion on the homeowner preferences? Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think I prefer 14 so we can spread the funds deeper. Yeah, I tell you what I find interesting in the community. The reason I'm keeping going is because I think folks are getting educated. Early on in the night, you saw a lot of negative votes on digital divide. As different people have explained why it's important, you're starting to see uh, the community uh, really understand the, the, the significance of it. I think this is just enormously valuable to listen. Uh, the collective wisdom of this city is terrific. Who's next? We'll keep going a little bit longer. Keep going. Uh, who's next? Next caller we have is Zena D. Zena D, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Zena, are you with us? I think we may have kept her up too late. All right, who's next? Next caller we have is Sherry. Sherry, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I'm Sherry Burton from Midwest Neighborhood, and I'm advocating for um, money to go to that phase one to the Joe Louis Greenway project. Isn't it, isn't it going to be um, amazing for your neighborhood? Yes, it is. So um, why don't you tell, really tell, tell people, tell people about what it means to your neighborhood. What it means to us is that we are the forgotten neighborhood. We haven't had anything over here. So, uh, and we are a legacy neighborhood, meaning that uh, we're generational. We're living in our parents and grandparents' homes. So it means everything to us in terms of being stimulated by uh, development. We want to uh, encourage economic growth uh, over here. And we would love to have a brand new recreation center. We don't have a recreation center. We don't have schools. We don't have anything. Yeah. So that Joe Lewis Greenway is going to bring a lot of attention as well as development to our area. And, and okay, so you, you want that as a priority. You got to pick what's your lowest priority. Um, I think when you take care of everything else, public safety okay. would be the lowest priority. And do you have an opinion on whether homeowners should get preferences on these services? Yes, 2014. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I've spent some time over your neighborhood and we got a lot of work to do, but uh, I think we, we have a direction. So thank you for the call. Spend some dollars. Yeah, we will. We will. There's going to be a lot of them coming down the Joe Louis Greenway. It's going to, it's going to matter a lot. I know you know that. Right, go ahead. Next caller we have is Don Wilson C. Don Wilson C., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Good evening, Mayor Duggan. Good evening. This is Don Wilson Clark. I am from Brightmore. And I would eliminate public safety okay. because public safety, all of these other buckets create public safety. Okay. And what would be um, your highest priority? My highest priority would be creating um, trauma-informed communities. Um, we have a severe mental health crisis in our city. And those type of things create public safety. Um, like my neighbor Luella stated, the people that were overtaxed, they all need to be compensated. 
Um, so I will not so, answer so you your vote, question. Oh, you don't want that. to vote for the 2016. Okay. No, everybody right. needs to be paid back. The land bank is a fraud. Okay. And those houses that were stolen and placed there, the people in our city need to be compensated. All right. Next caller we have is QW. QW, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. What neighborhood do you live in? I'm in the, uh, I'm by uh, Kelly and Whittier. So okay. that's a 48224 zip right. code. So tell us what's the highest priority to you? Uh, to me, the highest priority should be homeowners. Okay. You know, the own the home before, I own my home before 2009. So I don't know if that counts for that 2009 to 2014. Okay. What would you like to see me do for homeowners? Um, homeowners need um, like middle income. In, well, I've been here a long time. And I think we need something like uh, funding for us where we don't, where we do not have to pay uh, a lot because we've been here for a long time and the taxes are overwhelming and we need a lot of repairs. You know, like one lady said about the piping in the home, the pipes, right? right. Uh, plumbing, it's a lot of work that we need. And, and um, so which one is afford. your lowest priority on this list? Uh, the lowest priority would be the parks rec centers and okay. culture facility All right. because I think we have, we don't need to put as much money. Right. We, we spent a lot of money area. over in your area on that. Yeah. Uh, if I could do one yeah. thing for your neighborhood right now to make your quality of life better, what would it be? Um, really in my neighborhood, um, it's really, uh, the housing. Okay. Uh, we have some, um, uh, homes that need to be, um, just redid or not yeah. I, I don't want them to be torn down no, they can that you got but, a lot um, of housing stock there that can be salvaged yes yeah no i, I think and that's what i would love to see. Uh, th there's no area of the city that's got more salvageable houses than your area and so we are going to prioritize that so thank you uh for that call who's next next caller we John, have. how many people we got waiting in line here Okay, we're, we're going to go to 930. That's going to have to be the limit. We still got 80 people waiting. I'm glad we're doing 25 of these, although I won't be doing other all 25. Uh, who's next? Next caller we have is number ending in 804. 804, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Tell us what neighborhood do you live in. Hi, I I live in the Finkel, Illinois area, president for the Soda Ellsworth Black Association. And my uh, highest priority is the streetscape. And I would okay. love to see some of that money come to uh, our area to have a transformational project. Would you like Soda us, Soda and how, how, so let me ask you this. If we took what we did up by Seven Mile on Livernois and we came down your way, is that the kind of thing you'd like to see? Yes, and I would like to see it on Finkel and Livernois through Finkel and Wyoming. Yeah, I think Finkel in that oh, area is a county road, isn't it? Yeah, so Finkel is a county road in that area. I don't have jurisdiction, but, but you know, if we could stay at this long enough, I would love to see us uh, take uh, Livernois down even south of Finkel with that same kind of beautiful look that we did. I think that whole area has got potential. What's your lowest priority on this list? Uh, I would say maybe the cameras, but I also would like to say I would like to see money, grant money go to seniors and disabled people to help them um, make their home handicap accessible. Yeah. A lot of seniors are trying to stay in their homes. We need walk-in tubs. We need walk-in um, showers. We need ramps. 
and we think that would be a great assistance. You know, myself, this is I've been that's a great I, that's a great years. idea, and it's one we haven't talked about, and we're gonna we're gonna add it uh, to our list. That's why we do these, uh, as we get so many good ideas. And then, uh, do you have a preference on the uh, uh, the the homeowners, uh, whether homeowners should get preference? Well, I've been in my home for 50 years, so I would say the uh, 2014. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Next caller we have is Shane J. Shane J., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hello, I'm Jasmine Reed. Um, I live in Martin Park. Um, and District 2, right. um, Six Mile and Liver Noise. Um, my lowest priority would be uh, Digital Divide and Parks and um, Recs. Um, my highest priority is safety. Um, uh, just more assistance for police to complete investigations, um, cameras, um, some way to ticket people who are speeding. Um, it's like it's the biggest one of the biggest um, problems in the neighborhoods is the yeah, speeding. I know it. So it's just some way to how, take how it long people. how long have you been there? Um, we bought our home in 2018. Okay. Um, but we moved from Belmont area, Puritan uh, near Greenfield, um, okay. to this area. How, how, do you, how do you how do you like the how do you like the new love. how do you like the new neighborhood? I, we love this neighborhood. I am. Um, I participate in our block club, New Martin Park District Association. Yeah. I'm on the beautification committee as well, on the membership chair. Um, so we love this neighborhood, and we do have, and we have our block club meetings every month. But we do have speed humps. It's just not enough. People mm -hmm. actually need to be ticketed. Yeah. And the littering, I think, is. Um, it is ridiculous. Uh, it's a huge priority. Um, it's, it's so dirty. The city is very, very dirty. It really is. I'm, I'm going to deal with that. I'm, I'm really angry, and I, I understand about COVID and everything, but uh, we were making a lot of progress on, on the city just being cleaner, and we're, we're not doing a good job right now, but we're going to jump on that. Do you have an opinion on the homeowner preferences? Um, yes, but I just wanted to finish my thoughts. Oh, go ahead. Um, if we could do like a campaign for um, uh, students like at school and just the community commercials and just and on a radio just an education campaign about littering yeah. that would be great use of funds um, 2014 is my preference okay thank you next caller we have is Ingrid G Ingrid G you may unmute yourself you have one minute mm. Ingrid are you with us Yep, I am. Good. Tell us Good what evening. neighborhood you live in. Sure. I'm in Jefferson Chalmers. Okay. My highest priority is neighborhood investment. Okay. My lowest priority is public safety. Okay. Um, I think homeowners who lost their homes should be given a Detroit Land Bank home. And uh, I think if I were to um, share one idea, that would be um, for 250000 to be put into a drone pilot network. Um, I understand that the uh, city of Detroit owns some of the vacant schools, um, and I would like to see tactical preservation of Joseph Guyton Elementary so that they can have a ghost kitchen. Um, the gym is renovated for the use of a construction uh, training school, and that uh, companies like Sony or Bose can uh, help with the auditorium space. All right. Well, thank you. Those are very good ideas. Thank you very much. Next caller is C. Harris. C. Harris, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Good evening. My name is Calibri. I'm in Woodbridge. Um, my lowest priority would actually be um, public safety. Uh, it is a concern of mine, the speeding and... Um, also police training, but I don't believe we need 50 million to do that. So I, would, I do agree that we need to reduce that. Um, also my higher priority would be recreation and um, really creative programs, not necessarily parks, but things that address the need, for instance, if they're racing, let them race on Bell Isle and give them some sort of training or something, you know, um, um, and also mental health, you know, just creative programs to, to, um, 
engage the people so that they're not idle and getting into trouble. All right. Thank you and, very much. Go ahead. Just have, yeah, another and, idea. Go ahead. Oh, for the homes, I do agree with previous callers about for those that lost their homes, being able to um, receive homes directly from the land bank or um, receive grants for, well, I, I don't believe that they should receive grants to purchase. I believe that they should get their homes back. Yeah, these, are, the, the, yeah, these aren't things that this program will be able to address, but I appreciate your sentiment. All right, who's next? Next caller we have is Teresa C. Teresa C., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Good evening, Mayor. Good How evening. are you? Good. Um, the president of Longfellow Black Club. Um, we have a couple of issues here. First, I would like to know what is the time frame when the seniors receive approval for the senior citizen home repair grant? Uh, so we're going to see what council does, uh, but if uh, this gets approved in June and money uh, starts to come online in July. Uh, then we'll set up a program uh, and, uh, and take applications. And then it's just a question of how many work crews are available. We will have, I, with, I can tell you with virtual certainty, we will have more money than skilled work crews to do home repairs. And that'll be the bottleneck. And, and one oh. of the things we need to do is we're going to need to train our own residents to be able to do these repairs to ramp up the way we need to. I agree. However, uh, I have a resident who has been waiting, been uh, going through the process since January 27th of this year. So now we're looking at four months. Oh, you've got people that are waiting seven or eight years. So that's that's uh, January is in and, and this thing is not is not a long time. Okay. So. Okay, well, I'm going to take that up at a later date. I have a home uh, on Martindale in zip code 48204 that's been on the demolition for 24 years. That is totally unacceptable. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's not this funding program. So fortunately, the voters passed Proposal N. Uh, we lost uh, time on the demolition. I tried my best, but it's now uh, uh, Proposal N passed, and we are now full speed ahead on that program okay, again. Now let me bring it on home. So okay. the alley off of 14th um, has not been claimed in okay. over 20 years. Uh, all right. So I, I'm, we're, we're focused. Like tonight's night is focused on, on budget and how we spend uh, the American And I, and I got money. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank okay, you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mayor. Thank have you. a good evening. Okay. Next caller we have is Samuel D. Samuel D., you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Wow, I didn't think I was going to get on. Thank there, you, Mayor. There you go. Thank Good you. evening. Yay. I'm surprised. And, and with my 50 seconds, I'll say this. I am 100%, sir, excited to say that my priority vote is for cultural, yep, yeah, right there, cultural yeah. facilities. <laughs> Okay, and what's why? Tell me why. Because first of all, well, I can't have you do an NDA, but I, I have a <laughs> I have a program that I would love to add to the list okay. of wonderful additives to the city of Detroit. But um, and also in support of what you, the three that you showed, Motown and the others, to just help the city revitalize in terms of what we what we should be representing ourselves as as a tourism spot as we come back to society and we come back to normal just highlighting the city of Detroit and making sure that our cultural facilities are attracting I just left okay uh, Tennessee I, I, I got you what would what would your lowest priority be uh, the priority would be my um, least priority would be um, really the small business assistance okay and do you have yeah. an opinion on the homeowner preference? Um, definitely the 14. Okay. Definitely the 14. Yeah, and it's just overall that um, through the uh, art therapy to support the expressive art therapy. Mm -hmm. I, and I have done some work with the uh, EHD behavioral health department there in the city. So I would I really want to see how supporting um, 
support to expressive art therapy and how that would work with uh, DHD uh, Behavioral Health Department. I, I just really want all of that to melt together to help the city of Detroit. Those are great suggestions. All right, we're going to take our last caller of the night, but there's going to be 25 more of these. So you're going to get plenty of opportunity. Uh, so who's our last caller? Caller with the number ending in 476. 476. You may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Last caller is Kirsty H. Kirsty H. You may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Christy, are you with us? Okay, I think we're losing them. Fine, one more, last, last try. Yeah, I lasted them. I it wasn't planning Thomas to go two and a half o. hours, but go ahead. Thomas O, you may unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hello. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for taking my call. I am definitely in favor of uh, the residents prior to 2014. Okay. receiving a home repair grant. Um, one of the earlier callers mentioned something that resonates with me when she said tree stumps in the backyard and around the houses mm -hmm. and old, old pipes. And that's something that sometimes people overlook. Yeah. I know your priority is moving the city forward, but when we deal with the housing issues and compounded by the uh, insurance rates that we've had to deal with for decades, it's an incredible hardship. And then when you add seconds. the types of wages seconds. that many of the people of Detroit have had to deal with, it's an incredible yeah. challenge. So which one of so these would be your lowest priority? My lowest priority would be public safety because they're gonna get funding on federal levels and and through other grants. I don't I don't so know why I'm you think that, but okay. Uh, I, I believe it, and and because they they always do. Uh, and so, uh, and the rest. God, God, God doesn't provide. You got to go get it yourself. But okay, uh, that's great. Yeah. So, and what neighborhood are you from? I'm in District Five, one street north of the Boston Edison District. Okay. They don't allow us in the club. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, but, but, but development's going your way. You're going to be okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you uh, very much for the last call of the night. And I think, you know, we can see patterns starting to emerge on uh, what people want to see for their, uh, their city. Uh, and we're going to do this a lot of different times and ask a lot of questions. And at the end of the day, we're, we're going to uh, uh, act together with our, our partners on, on city council. So, uh, I wasn't planning two and a half hours, but I learned a tremendous amount, lots of great ideas. Thank you very much for sticking with us.